from McMahon Stadium in Calgary. It's the final regular season game of the 2017 Canada West football season as the number one ranked University of Calgary Dinos take on the University of Alberta Golden Bears in a provincial battle. I'm Ben Matchett, joined by Drew Carpenter here today. And this game is a little bit of an interesting one for both sides. The Dinos with the number one ranking in the nation, they're undefeated. Um, first place is in the bag already. They know they're home throughout the playoffs. So not really much at stake in the standings for them, but it's a good opportunity for the Dinos uh, to get some depth players out there today. Absolutely. It's a great test to get the young guys out, uh, fill in some gaps, because of course the playoffs playoffs are a long haul. And uh, if you are going to make it all the way to Vanier Cup, guaranteed you're going to have to deal with injuries. So now is a great opportunity to get those guys some reps and get them ready. It is a little bit of an interesting lineup for the Dinos today, and we'll get uh, to that as we get through the game. For the Golden Bears, they come into this one at two and five, still with a chance to make the playoffs. And it's an interesting scenario for Alberta that they can uh, still lose this game, but depending on what happens with the Manitoba-Saskatchewan game later tonight, uh, they could still end up making the playoffs and breaking that streak that uh, stretches all the way back to 2010. But what do you expect to see from U of A today? Well, I think uh, it's tough when, when it's kind of out of your hands like that, but regardless, you know they're going to play to win because there is a scenario where they need to win by 15 points in order to that, for that to happen. And uh, there's no reason for them not to play like that. I think at this level, regardless of your chances, you're always playing to win. There's a lot of uh, personal bests and records that can be accomplished today as well. So you know they're going to be trying to make that happen. One of those records is, uh, of course, University of Alberta running back Ed Elnicki. He's 106 yards away from the all-time Canada West single season rushing record. And he's just been tearing apart opposing defenses today. What do the Dinos have to do to stop him? Well, I think uh, the best thing you can do is, is just try to control his gains. It, you know, don't give him the big the big gains, the big runs. If you can keep him with three, four yards of carry, you're going to do a good job of slowing down the game, eating up the clock, and keeping them from scoring too much. Um, at the end of the day, he has been effective, and uh, we'll see what he does. But you know they're going to be pushing for that because 106 yards or more is good for U of A no matter how you slice it. His average closer to 180 on the season. So if he keeps that up, he should get that record today. We'll see how it all unfolds. The Dinos holding a 16-game on-field win streak against the Golden Bears. And, of course, U of A looking to stop that today. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this on CanadaWest.tv. Teams meeting in center field for the coin toss. The second, this is the second meeting of the regular season between the Dinos and the Golden Bears. They also met way back in week one. That was all the way back on September 1st as the Dinos took that one at Footfield in Edmonton by a score of 55-26. The Dinos haven't really looked back from there. They've won their last seven in a row. Uh, and looking to complete the final undefe or the undefeated season here for the third time in school history. The last two were actually 2011 or 2013 and 2015. Failed, so never failed. <laughs> Looks like the Dinos have deferred. U of A is going to receive. We don't lose coin tosses. Golden Bears will accept the opening kickoff. Not too much wind to speak of today here at McMahon, unlike the last home game for the Dinos against Manitoba where it was just crazy and the MVP of the game was really the uh, the opening coin toss. Alberta will start with the football, but first, our national anthem. Of the Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta. The city of Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. Now please stand everyone, remove your hats and caps, and join Megan Trax in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all thy sons command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, 
we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, The officials today, the referee, number 55, John Popplestone. Just about set for kickoff here at McMahon Stadium as the number one ranked 7-0 University of Calgary Dinos look to wrap up the undefeated campaign as they take on their provincial rivals, the Alberta Golden Bears. Ben Matchett joining you along with former Dinos defensive back Drew Carpenter. Glad to have you back in the booth with us today, Drew. It's a pleasure, Ben. Uh, you mentioned the weather earlier, and one thing I wanted to point out was, uh, I think with the setting for this game and the, the two teams as well, uh, weather probably wasn't going to be much of a factor anyways. The uh, Golden Bears are a strong running team, to, no doubt, uh, as well as the Dinos. And uh, the last thing on the docket there is you've got Sanagra looking for a, a completion record, and so you're not going to do that with long balls. You're going to do that with the short stuff, try to keep the percentages high. Alberta will receive the opening kickoff is Nico DeFonte, who's also got a chance at a 100-point season, just the fourth one in Dino's history. He's nine points away from that. Back to receive the kickoff for the Golden Bears is number 21, Andre Webster, standing on about his five-yard line. Ball's on the tee. Nico DeFonte addresses the ball. It's a line drive kick. It's actually taken back toward the goal line by the Golden Bears' Levon Harlack. He brings it up across the 20 before he's finally brought down by the Dinos. And that's where the Golden Bears will scrimmage. On the tackle for Calgary was receiver Eric Newsel. Be first and 10 Alberta from their own 20. Bit of an abnormal kick there by DeFonte, but uh, a fair return and, and coverage both by the Dinos and the Bears there, bringing it back out to the 20. This is a good opportunity for U of A to establish this run game early on. Brad Baker is the quarterback. He's got. Ed Ilnicki in the backfield with him. Ilnicki averaging 187 rushing yards a game. And no surprise, the give to Ed Ilnicki. He goes off the right side. The Dino's there to stand him up right away. Micah Tights in on that tackle for a short gain, if any. Looks like U of A was trying to seal the edge there. Couldn't quite get it done. Ilnicki had to tuck inside and just pick up a few. So you can see here on the edge, Guys getting outside of their uh, blockers, forcing them to turn back inside. Call it a loss of about a foot on the play. It's second and long for Alberta. Baker this time looking left, and he goes downfield. Had a man, but it's incomplete. Intended for Nathan Rowe, who's been another revelation for the Golden Bears this year. He had that 108, I believe, yard um, touchdown against the Dinos back in week one. That ball's incomplete and the Golden Bears will be forced to punt. Yeah, it looks like we had a bit of a miscue there on the route. Uh, receiver running inside, quarterback throwing outside. I'm sure they'll deal with that on the sidelines and be set uh, for the next, uh, next attempt. Dinos will look to get good field position here as they start their first offensive series. Brent Arthur into punt for Alberta. Check that, it's Baker, the quarterback, that's punting. And it takes a Golden Bears bounce and out of bounds inside the Calgary 50. So still decent field position for the Dinos as they scrimmage first and 10. Looks like their own 47-yard line. Yeah, it came up a little short on that kick, although fortuitous bounce and all in all, a, a fairly effective kick away coming out of their end. But like you say, Dinos are starting with some great field position here. Not in the lineup for the Dinos today at tailback, Jeshrin Antwi and Robert Stewart. So two of the Dinos' top rushers not in the game today. It's Alessandro Molnar, number 20, and he gets the 
play action as Sinagra rolling to his right has a man. It's a complete to Michael Klukas. Klukas goes down the sideline and he's pushed out of bounds inside the Alberta 50, close to the 45. That'll be a first down for the Dinos on their first play from scrimmage. Good patience by Sinagra there. Takes his time, really surveys, finds a man just out in the flats. And Klukas does a good job. Catches that ball and gets upfield. That's what you're coached to do. Inside the 45, it's first and 10 Dinos. Sinagra again with Molnar in the backfield. Sinagra looking back to Klukas, and he's got the catch close to the first down marker. And Sinagra accurate on his first two passes, and it, it is a first down for the Dinos as they start to march. And that's how they're going to give Sinagra an opportunity to hit that record. Just chipping away little shots like that, small completions, let the receiver do the job, get upfield. Michael Klukas may factor more into this game than he normally has throughout the year as Hunter Carl also a scratch for the Dinos today. First and 10, Dinos from the 33. This time the give is to Molnar. He goes off the left side, spins and gets a couple more yards. The ball comes loose and the Golden Bears pick it up. Pitch to see here what happens. And it is a fumble. It's Alberta football as Alessandro Molnar didn't look like he was even touched. He just kind of dropped the ball as yeah, he was going Yeah, hopefully we get a look at it on the replay here. So he's swinging the ball around a little bit, but oh, I don't know. That's uh, it's a tough angle seen from the backside there, but it looked like he might have been hitting the ground before the ball came out. Aaron Chabelo, number 33, the linebacker, was there with the tackle. And maybe that hit from the backside was what caused the ball to come loose. But anyway, it's Alberta ball, first down on the 26. Here's the give to Ed Ilnicki on the right side. He spins off a tackle, finally brought down by... Plamondon, Jacob Plamondon for the Dinos. It's a game of about eight, and that's the danger of Ed Elnicki, able to spin off those tackles. Well, he just took his time, stayed in behind his blockers, waited for his opportunity, and hit the gap. I mean, he didn't even get touched until he was four yards deep in, in the defensive end. Second down, about three yards to go. And Ilnick, he gets the call again. This time the Dino's there to stuff him. He may not have even gotten back to the line of scrimmage there as the Calgary front seven, who's been so effective all season long, was able to stuff the leading rusher in the conference. Uh, it's no secret the Dino's like to bring pressure and uh, they made the right call there. And U of A's gonna have to go and uh, try to solve that problem for next time. Baker into punt. Lone return man for the Dinos is Jacob Esquerdo. He's standing inside his own 40. High snap for Baker. He gets it down, gets the punt away again, looking for the sideline. Esquerdo tracks it down and he catches it just as it goes out of bounds at the Calgary 44. So the Dinos basically get to start over and get a do-over on that drive after the fumble as their first and 10 from their own 44. Uh, U of A is doing a good job when they are kicking it away of placing it towards the sidelines and making the most of what are typically shorter kicks. Not the first time we've seen a quarterback as the punter here as that was Adam Sinagra's role through most of last season. Nico DeFonte has taken that over for the Dinos and has performed admirably this year near a 40 yard average. First and 10 Calgary on the 44, Sinagra in the shotgun. He's looking to his right, has lots of time, decides to pull it down and runs. He goes to the right side, brings himself back. There comes the ball loose again. The Golden Bears finally do land on it. And another fumble for the Dinos gives the Golden Bears the football deep in Calgary territory. That looked like Lucky Daniels picking up the ball for U of A. 7-0 or, or not, uh, ranked number one in the nation or not, you got to hold on to the football. And it uh, doesn't matter who you're playing. You keep turning it over like this, and it's going to be a long day. The strip from Tack Landry, number 27. And then the recovery by Daniels gives the Golden Bears the football, first and 10 at the Calgary 32. Baker this time throwing. Look to the right side, and is that picked off? No. 
We saw one of those plays a couple weeks ago against Manitoba as a little bit of a ping pong with the ball in the air, but it falls incomplete. The Dinos unable to haul that one in. Just running all curls there, basically a run play going to the air. Everybody curls up around five yards deep. I mean, got to be making those catches. If you want to be competitive in this conference, in this league, you got to be making those catches. Tyler Henry was the intent, intended target for Baker there. It's second and 10, Alberta. Baker looking to pass again. He's flushed out of the pocket. Has a man toward the sidelines. It's complete, and he's pushed out of bounds. That's Nathan Rowe near the first down yard, or the first down yardage, but it looks like he'll be about a yard and a half short. Yeah, it's a long throw for not a lot of gain, but hey, you take what you can get. Uh, pretty good squeeze by the Dinos there to keep him from getting the first down. Uh, we'll see where they mark it here, and uh, I'm assuming they're going to go for it. Third down, about a yard to go here. Baker has Ilnicki along with Kamal Kuchisarli in the backfield. Ilnicki off the right side. He's got the first down and more. Finally brought down at the 15-yard line. Nathan Mitchell in on the tackle for the Dinos, but it's a first down Golden Bears. Patient, patience is going to be the word of the day today. Clearly, uh, Ilnicki has some great vision, and a big part of that comes from taking the time to Look around, see where the opportunities are. Ilnicki started the game needing 106 yards to tie the all-time Canada West single season rushing record. He's at 14 so far here as we play just over five minutes of the first quarter. Baker throwing to his right, has a man complete. Hit immediately is Tyler Henry. And there is a flag on the play here. We'll see how that shakes out after about a five yard gain for the Golden Bears. Yeah, it looks like the Bears are going to take a penalty here, but specific to that play, uh, just hitting the little curl uh, in, in the slot there underneath. Um, they did have a vertical going over top. Uh, it's a couple curls we've seen in a row. Uh, I'm interested to see how long it is before they take a shot. The initial indication was unnecessary roughness against Alberta. The officials talk it over with the Calgary captains, and here's the call. Unnecessary roughness, University of Alberta number 51. That penalty is applied 15 yards from the end of the play. Second down. So the Bears lose the down and 15 yards, so it should be about second and 20 here. That's Justin Lawrence, the left guard, called for the unnecessary roughness penalty. Hopefully that doesn't set a precedence, but uh, there is a history amongst these teams, Battle of Alberta. Things can get uh, a little nasty down there. Second down, looks like about 17 for Alberta. Quick little short pass over the middle is complete. Brought down by Dean Leonard is Nathan Rowe. He'll get close to the original line of scrimmage, but a very short gain on second and quite long. It'll be third down Alberta at the 19. So Alberta's just clearing out there, bringing somebody underneath from the outside. Uh, Dinos in man coverage. Pretty good job by Leonard. It was not an easy one to stick with that receiver. He definitely has the advantage. Uh, good catch, good tackle. Unfortunately, just not enough for a first down. Dean Leonard, the son of former Calgary Stampede, Kenton Leonard. Out to attempt the field goal here is Brent Arthur for Alberta. It'll be about a 25-yard attempt. Arthur strikes the ball, and it is... Looked like he hooked it. Wide left. Just didn't bring his that. hips through. No, they, it is good. We were looking at the wrong official there. <laughs> <laughs> to see the two officials under the goalposts actually didn't uh, make a signal. No. But the field goal is good from 25. So uh, Alberta, Alberta strikes first, and Calgary has chosen to address the yeah, ball as we no. see. Oh, well, no, he did no, miss we that. Right. So it's a single point. And they put three on the scoreboard too, so. All you kickers out there, bring your hips through. Just the single for Alberta as the Dinos scrimmage. Here's Alessandro Molnar running on the right side. He gains about six before he's stopped by the Golden Bears in on the tackle for Alberta's Aaron Chabelo. Just an off tackle sprint there, beat you to the corner. Pretty good job by the receivers cutting down the DBs out there and giving some room for the tailback to run. It was actually Cole Kussman, numbers 32, with the carry for the Dinos. Second down and about four yards to go. 
from the Calgary 41. Christman in the backfield. Snagger instead decides to go to the sideline, and he has Mr. Reliable, Michael Klukas. And that's enough for the first down. Quick hitters. And as we were talking before the game, Ben, that right there is an example of why Snagger is hunting down that completion record, but with way less attempts. That record currently held by Greg Vavra, the Dinos legend, Heck Crichton winner and Vanier Cup champion from 1983. Sanagra three for three so far on the day, needs 15 more. He's looking for his fourth completion here. All kinds of time in the pocket. Sanagra finally offloads it, and it is complete up near the 40-yard line. Jacob Esquerdo hauls that in for a gain of about 17. Good job standing in there. Mentioned patience a few times. That is definitely the word of the day. Almost threw behind the receiver, though. Got to make sure you get it out well in front. Uh, defender had a chance to make a play on the ball there. Levon Horlack in on the coverage for the Bears, but a good catch made by Esquerdo. First and 10 Dinos at the Alberta 42. There's the handoff. No, it's play action. That's a good catch on the right side. I believe that's Basilis, number 85, with the catch for the Dinos, and he'll be up close to the first down marker. Call that the dink and dunk. Little zone read, play action, drop it off to the crossing receiver. Very effective. It's Alex Basilis, the former quarterback turned receiver, who has his first catch of the season. Gain of about 13, it's first and 10 dinos inside the Alberta 30. This time they do hand it off inside to Cusman. He is mobbed by a couple of Golden Bears. Luke Sperry, number 35, in on that tackle for Alberta, but it's a game of about four, second and manageable for Calgary. Yeah, just some old-fashioned straight-ahead football there. Good job by Alberta containing, keeping it short. Dinos have to make something of this here with an opportunity to score. We'll call it second and seven. Sinagra has some time, throws out to the sideline, looking for Klukas near the goal line. And that's incomplete. Little out corner route by the slot and receiver on the short side. That's a square though, not Klukas, my apologies. Sinagra made a pretty good throw there, just a little bit beyond his reach. Threw it to where only the receiver could get to it. That's what you want. The first incompletion of the day for Adam Sinagra, and that brings up a field goal try for Nico DeFonte. This will be from about the 33. DeFonte 14 of 19 on the season. Three for five from 30 to 39 yards. This one from 33, the kick is down, and it is wide right. So kickers trade single points here in the first nine minutes of this contest, and it's a 1-1 tie between the Dinos and the Golden Bears. You sure there's no wind down there? Right. Definitely doesn't look like it. Uh, it's tough. Uh, you know, the short kicks, we always assume they're automatic, but not necessarily. There's a lot going on when it comes to snapping, pinning, and delivering a field goal. DeFonte had his uh, career-long 49-yarder last week uh, in Regina. In that crazy wind game, that, that game was unbelievable. The, <laughs> the new stadium and the, the way the wind comes in there off the... Uh, that one little open corner on the one side of the new Mosaic Stadium in Regina. So the Dinos got their victory in their first ever appearance at that stadium, which was something Coach Harris was a little bit worried about going into that. They, they opened uh, Investors Group Field in Winnipeg a couple of years ago and didn't play all that well in the brand new surroundings, but able to uh, fend off a Regina comeback last week. Yeah, I think that's a game the Dinos can definitely be proud of because uh, Regina was looking to be some stiff competition uh, in this conference this year. But uh, they managed to pull it out, albeit uh, <laughs> uh, for a while there it looked like Regina was coming back and, and going to take it for themselves. But here we are, 7-0, and uh, looking to clean it up and head through the playoffs, ideally, for the Dinos. Coming up at the top of the hour, it's the... Regina Rams and the UBC Thunderbirds from Thunderbird Stadium in Vancouver and that game with all kinds of playoff implications. The two teams know they're going to play each other next week 
The question is where it's going to be. And if whichever team wins that game today, we'll get the opportunity to host that conference semifinal next week with the winner of that to play the winner of Calgary versus TBD for yeah. the Hardy Cup. That's a, an interesting situation. When you know you're going to be playing again the next week, do you stick with your game plan? Do you run a bunch of random things? And what do you do? <laughs> Here it's first and 10 for the Golden Bears at their own 35. Baker in the shotgun. They give to Ilnicki on the left side. And Ed Ilnicki cuts back inside. He gains about three yards before he's met by the Dinos. You Nicky know, really takes his time to make his decisions, and uh, fortunately the big guys up front give him that time to do so. Once he does, he hits it hard. The offensive line has been a strong point for the Golden Bears this year, and obviously with Il Nicky averaging 187 yards a game, that's going to be the case. Don't often do it on your own. Gain is three. It'll be second and seven, Alberta. Baker. Looking over the middle, has a man complete to Nathan Rowe up across the 52. Flag comes in. We'll see what the call is there. It's a easily a first down for Alberta. Out curl combination there. We got the inside receiver running the short out, and the outside receiver running the deep cur curl coming back to the football. No uh, way! Classic Are route combination, uh, very effective. Indication is this is going against the Golden Bears, so this could be coming back. John Popplestone talks to Brett Wade, and here's the call. Illegal contact, U of A number 85, 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. That's uh, the, the gift and the curse of the comeback. Uh, often incentivizes the receiver to get a little push going. And uh, when you push off on the defender, of course, the defender can't get his hands on you, but you can't really put your hands on them. It's got to go both ways. It's a relatively rare offensive illegal contact call. But that pushes the Golden Bears back inside the 30. It's second down and 17 from their own 28. Baker in the shotgun. Looking to his left, and he is brought down. Jack McEwen, the fifth-year senior, with the sack. And with that sack, the Dinos have tied their single-season team sacks record with 25. They set that twice, the most recent one back in 2012, but that'll force third down, and there's that front seven for the Dinos again. As we discussed pregame, felt pretty comfortable that was a record that was probably going to get set today. I believe it was eight sacks that the Dinos had against the Regina Rams last week. That'll help. Baker in the punt. Eric Newsel, number 84, the lone return man for the Dino, standing on his own 50. There's a good punt that forces Newsel back to about the 47 yard line. He's going to try to get the return on, but the Bears, with good downfield coverage, able to limit that. He might have even lost a yard or two on that. Luke Sperry, number 35, in on the tackle for Alberta. Well, I mentioned it on the last kick, and uh, U of A continues to do a good job of positioning the football well. Uh, for the return, that's uh, half the battle. If you can keep the returner into a small space, the coverage team has a much easier job surrounding them. First and 10 Dinos on their own, 46. It's Calgary again starting with solid field position here. Sinagra in the shotgun to give. Play action again. And this time it's complete. And the ball flops loose again. And here comes the Golden Bears to land on it for their third fumble recovery of the first quarter. Now, I don't know if this is a, an example of youth or what it is, but we've got three fumble turnovers already in the first quarter here by the Dinos. And uh, as much as, you know, you want to maybe use youth as an excuse, there is no excuse. You got to put that ball away. You got to get two hands on it. You're going to take a big shot there with two defenders. Protect it. Tack Landry pops the ball loose with the hit on Noozle and there to recover it as well. So. Alberta, that punt works out well. They get it at the Calgary 46, first and 10. And Nicky off the right hip, it's play action. Looking for Nathan Rowe downfield. Rowe has the catch inside the 20, and a great catch by Nathan Rowe in coverage from Dean Leonard. That's an excellent catch. And you know what, to Dean Leonard's uh, defense too, that, that was pretty good coverage on, on his uh, accord. But at the end of the day, receiver goes and gets the football, pulls it in, hangs on to it, <laughs> and uh, great play. 
Biggest play of the game for the Golden Bears so far. Their first and 10 inside the Calgary 20. As we get to see the red zone offense for the Bears. Going back to the air again. This time it's batted down and falls incomplete as the Calgary front got up there. Nathan Rowe may have, or Boston Rowe, excuse me, may have uh, knocked that down for the Dinos. Uh, that's uh, strength of a good front seven. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Getting hands on footballs like that. Secondary loves it. Uh, the O linemen maybe need to do a better job of getting those hands down, maybe a little cut block in or whatever they need to do. A little surprise they went to the air on first down there. Yeah. Got to mix it up every now and then. It's second and ten now. Flag comes in, looking for the end zone, and it falls incomplete intended for Nathan Rowe. But there is a flag on the play. Got to keep those arms moving. It was a pretty good throw, maybe a little long, but... Uh, you know, as a receiver, you got to keep those arms moving right to the very end. You reach too soon, it slows you down. Just out of his reach there in the end zone. Offside, Calgary number 93. Five yard penalty, repeat second down. The Bears get away with it, however, as Jack McEwen called for the offside infraction. They'll move the ball to the Calgary 13 and give Alberta another chance on second and medium. One one here as we are past the 12 minute mark of the opening quarter at McMahon Stadium. One one. It's a hockey score between the Dinos and the Golden Bears. Brad Baker in the shotgun again. He's looking to throw into the end zone, and that is caught for the touchdown. Tyler Henry. And the Bears get the first major of this one. Well, you either got to get pressure in the quarterback's face or you got to drop out and cover those receivers. When you do neither, things like that happen. Good job by U of A, attacking the corners. Much better throw, and uh, yeah, there you have it. It's a 13-yard touchdown pass as Henry got in behind the Calgary secondary, a young Calgary secondary, and we'll get to that in a moment too. The convert is good, but there is a flag on that, so we'll see how we need to sort that out. I think we got an offside by the Dinos, but you're right, uh, youth. <laughs> it's going to be the, the name of the, the game today, especially for the Dinos. We talked about it earlier. Uh, getting the young guys in, getting some reps, resting some of the more veteran players. Uh, it's it's good experience for those guys. That five-yard penalty be applied on the kickoff. Convert is good. So with the convert, that makes it 8-1 Alberta. Two minutes and 38 seconds left here in the first quarter. And the Bears taking advantage of their opportunities with the three Calgary turnovers so far. There's an old saying, uh, I think it was maybe Nelson Mandela that came out with it, said, uh, I never lose, I win or I learn. And uh, so far the Dinos are doing a lot of learning right now. a patchwork secondary for the Dinos with both Nick and Aaron Stats out of the lineup. Adam Lorenz is sitting for the second week in a row. So lots of uh, lots of movement back there. Cyril Iwanabe, who's been playing the Sam linebacker position for most of the year, is starting at halfback today just to fill that spot for the Dinos. So they've had to make some adjustments and the Bears have been able to take advantage so far. Here we go, here they lead it 8-1 to one, and the Dinos about to receive the kickoff that pushes them all the way back into the end zone. That'll go through for another single point. Maybe there is a little bit of wind down there. It's another single. It definitely has picked up. Um, but you know, Ben, we've alluded to it. Uh, football is a war of attrition, especially as you get deeper and deeper into the year. So you need to get as many guys reps as possible because there's a good chance as you move forward, they're going to be getting reps whether you like it or not. And so any experience is good experience. The Dinos have been able to face significantly more adversity in the last three or four weeks than they had in the past. After the, um, the game against Regina last week, were they able, able to fend off the comeback? It's a different type of team than the one that was, you know, beating up on opponents by 50, 60 points the last couple of years, and that could actually serve them well going into the playoffs here. As we see another play action, and that pass just a little too high for Jacob Esquerdo from Sinagra. 
It'll be second and 10 on the 35. Just looks like Snagger tried to rush it. But uh, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, and uh, the reality is though, uh, you have to manage your depth and uh, you can say that every year. <laughs> Second and 10, Sanagra with a shotgun looking downfield, has a man, it is complete up across the 50. The ball pops loose and they'll rule it incomplete. As Basilis was unable to squeeze that, and it's a rare two and out for the Dinos. Good throw by Sanagra, although uh, maybe not the ideal decision. He had a crossing route going over towards the Dinos sideline that uh, was wide open. End of the day, you got to catch the football. That's what you're paid to do. Good coverage there from Tack Landry, who had that last fumble recovery for the Bears. And Nico DeFonte into punt. There is a flag down. Taken by Alberta at the 35. Adam Zajdil with the return. Dinos there quickly, but we'll see what the flag is. Yeah, good coverage by the Dinos. Nowhere really to go for the returner. Straight ahead, fall down. Procedure is the indication against Calgary. The Dinos may have to re-kick this. Calgary number 35 did not report. Five yard penalty, repeat third down. Uh, little things like that are frustrating because when you're an ineligible guy, you need to report as eligible. That is your number one job. You know that coming out of the field, trust me coach tells you over and over and over and over again. So I'm sure he'll get an earful after this rep. So DeFonte will try it again, back five yards. 20 Calgary in! 20 Calgary in! Zajdil standing just across his 40 yard line. This time DeFonte with a shorter kick, taken at the 47 by Adam Zajdil. He gets across midfield and he's brought down by Charlie Moore of the Dinos, but Alberta will start in Calgary territory on this drive. Yeah, that definitely helped uh, Alberta. Shorter kick, better return. A little bit of a seam opening up there if it weren't for the jersey hold. Uh, that could have been a much bigger return. First and 10 Golden Bears to Calgary 48. Brad Baker at the controls. Ilnicki behind him, the give is to Ed Ilnicki on the right side, and he is met behind the line of scrimmage and forced out of bounds. Great work there as Michael Schmidt came up from his halfback position to stop that run play for a loss. Yeah, that's just good inside out pursuit by Michael Schmidt using the sideline. Uh, we say on defense, the sideline is the world's best defender, never misses. Use that sideline to your advantage, squeeze the running back out, make the tackle. It's a loss of three for Ilnicki. The Dinos sniff that one out. Second down and 13 Alberta. Back on their own side of midfield. Baker looking to his right, goes downfield. Has a man and is complete up across the first down marker. Nathan Rowe converts second and long and it's first down to Golden Bears. You know the curl route, this time a drop route, drop out route down the sideline. So running like you're going deep on a fade, dropping out. Timing route for sure. Um, well executed. First and 10 Alberta at the Calgary 40. Baker, shotgun, give to Ilnicki. Ilnicki went left, cut back right. He's up across the 30 to the 20. Ed Ilnicki up across the 15 yard line before he's finally brought down. And there's the first big break for Ed Ilnicki as he gets deep into the Dinos territory. Yet again, patience. Waited for the Dinos to over pursue as they did. Created a seam for himself and then hit it hard. Nathan Mitchell finally brought him down at the 15 yard line, but it's a 25 yard gain for Ed Ilnicki. And the Golden Bears in the red zone again. He looks like a veteran out there. Allow their rinse repeat. Right back to Ilnicki. This time he goes up the middle. And he stopped for a short game. Call it three or four up near the 10 yard line. Boston Rowe in on the tackle for the Dinos. Yeah, that's just smash mouth football. Makes good sense of this 
point of the field. Work yourself that much closer to the goal line. Take a shot here and see what happens. They can pick up the first down, of course. The five yard line is the first down marker for Alberta. Here's Baker in the shotgun again. Play action, Bill Nicky. This time he throws instead into the end zone. It's caught for the touchdown. Tyler Henry again, his second major of the first quarter, and the Golden Bears lead it by 14. And when you see a receiver that wide open, you expect to see defenders with their palms up saying, whose guy was that? Obviously miscommunication by the Dinos, uh, taken advantage of by Alberta. Alberta's making the most of their opportunities today. Can't say the same for UFC. It has been a little bit of a theme for the Dinos recently is it taken them a quarter, a quarter and a half for the offense to really get their bearings and start to roll as the convert is up and good. And that's the final play of the first quarter. The score, the University of Alberta Golden Bears 16 and the University of Calgary Dinos 1. We'll be back with the second quarter here on CanadaWest.tv. Our new partnership with Positive Match Rescue Foundation. Joe looks like a cutie. Oh, you know it, Dan. Look at it. Like, he's, he, he's a camera hog. Like, look at him. He knows exactly what's going down. Ladies and gentlemen, on the count of three, say aw. One, two, three. That was fantastic. Awesome. We got Lindsay and Megan, and this is Blake. Uh, tell us a little bit about Blake here. Blake is four years old. He came from our partner rescue in Los Angeles. He is a huge cuddle bug. He goes for an hour-long walk with his foster every day, and he still has time to play afterwards. Fantastic. Does he do any tricks, is he, uh, or is it just the snuggle bug thing that is his number one go-to? Uh, I think his big trick is he loves to give nose kisses. Oh, all right. There, you guys have a few of these, and you know they're very lovable, pettable creatures, aren't they? Yeah, rescue dogs just want all the love, all the attention. Blake even falls his foster mom into the bathroom. Unreal. So what would be the perfect home for Blake? A home with older kids, someone who wants to go for a walk every day, someone who wants to play with him, and then come home and have a good snuggle on the couch. Fantastic. And lastly, but not most importantly, of course, is the Positive Match. You guys have a great relationship with the Dinos. Talk a little bit about Positive Match because it might be new to some people out there. Yeah, so we're a non-for-profit rescue who has partners in international places like Mexico and Los Angeles and the Caribbean. We also pull from some of our rural shelters and Alberta, sorry, BC, Saskatchewan. And we are 100% volunteer run. So if you're looking for to come out and help us out, we have a booth on the concourse. We'd love your help. She did exactly what I was going to do. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Lindsay, Megan, for Blake, and all the fine folks over at Positive Match. Sixteen one, Alberta leading the Dinos after the first quarter as we have a quick look at the stats from the opening 15 minutes. Alberta dominating time of possession, 9.52 to just 5.08 for Calgary. And that three for three fumbles is the big one there for the Dinos as they coughed up the ball three times, the Golden Bears picking it up each time. Yeah, U of A is dominating in pretty much every statistical category and uh, you know, as we said, they're taking advantage of their opportunities and the Dinos seem to just be handing over opportunities. Keeping an eye on Il Nicky, looking for that record. He's got 43 net yards through the first quarter. He needs 106 to tie the all-time single season conference rushing record. So we'll keep an eye on that as the game continues. Ball on the tee and Calgary setting up a return. Taking it to 10, across the 15 near the 20 yard line before He's brought down, that's Eric Newsel, number 84, on the return. And Calgary with their longest field of the day so far. We've talked quite a bit about patience today, and that's an example of maybe taking a little too long to, to make a decision. Now, granted, there wasn't a lot of options as far as where to go, but at some point, you got to make a decision and just hit it hard. Adam Sinagra. He was six for nine for 69 yards in that first quarter. First and 10 from the 18. 
Looking to pass right away, goes to the far side of the field, has a man, it's complete. Up across the first down marker is Justin Dashik with the catch, but there's a flag in the Alberta secondary. Well executed by the Dinos. Not a lot of options there. That's a long throw for a relatively short gain, but uh, good job catching, turn it upfield, get the first down. Illegal contact, Alberta number 27. Penalties declined, first down. The catch in the game will stand as the Dinos get out from the shadow of their own goal post up near the 30 yard line. It'll be first and 10 after that catch by Justin Dashik. Niagara to give to Cole Cusman on the right side. Cusman cuts across the 35 yard line for a solid first down game of about six. I've seen that play a couple times from the Dinos now. Try to seal the edge and just sprint to it. U of A is doing a decent job of coming up on it, but uh, the Dinos are definitely taking advantage and picking up some decent yardage on first down. Second down and about four yards to go. Sinagra looking to pass. Short crossing route is complete across the middle. Up across the 40 is Michael Klukas, and he'll have enough for the first down as Klukas just able to get to that yard marker. Well, Sinagra's definitely doing what he needs to do to keep these drives moving. Uh, the Dinos can continue to hold on to the football here and uh, put these short completions together. They can continue to march and, and bring things back in, into a more balanced competition. Sanagra in the shotgun looking to throw again. All kinds of time. Pump fakes, decides to run. He's tripped up from behind and will get just across the 45 as he's able to make something out of nothing and good balance to stay on his feet after the shoestring tackle. Yeah, absolutely. Good sense. He stood in the pocket long enough and felt the pressure coming from behind. Uh, and hey, something out of nothing like you say. But a six yard gain for Sinagra as we get one more look at that. Just caught from behind and able to get another three or four yards out of it. So it'll be second and four. Throwing quickly again, this time has a man. It's Esquerdo hit hard and Esquerdo's up across the, excuse me, that Brendan Thera Plamondon up across midfield and it'll be another Calgary first down. Yeah, another quick hitter, short curl. Take the snap, get rid of it. Good job by Plamondon, catching that football and getting upfield. U of A is doing, doing their job though, surrounding the receiver and keeping them from picking up big gains. First and 10, Dinos, run play goes nowhere. They end up losing a yard on that. Yeah, good push and pursuit by uh, the front seven there of U of A, nowhere to go. Chabelo and Josh Tatinger in there for the Golden Bears to stop that up for a loss of one. Second and 11 now from right at midfield. For the Dinos, Molnar with the carry on that last play. Snagger in the shotgun, looking, he faces some pressure and he's Spins out of it, Sanagra up across the 50 yard line, close to the 45, and he's hit hard. He'll be short of the first down, however. Yeah, trying to make things happen. Although you gotta wonder, game like this, we've talked a little bit about the youth and resting guys and whatever. Should you be taking hits like that? I don't know. Sandwich between two Golden Bears there. Are the Dinos going for this here? Seems to be a little confusion on the substitutions here. It's a, it's almost a full two yards they need to get. Yeah, it's not a bad a spot, not bad spot on the field to take a, take a shot though. Josiah Joseph, the short yardage quarterback, in. they need to get across the 44 yard line. There's a handoff to Alessandro Molnar, and he's got that and more. Molnar up to the 20 yard line, where he's finally brought down, and I guess the call to go for it was a good one. You know, and you see that sort of result quite often in those situations because you end up packing the line, you don't have a lot of secondary contain, and uh, you only have to get through one gap and you got a long ways to go. Andrew Buckley was the specialist of that for the Dinos and he's continued that with the Stampeders a little bit. Absolutely. 
So it's a 26 yard gain for Molnar on third and two, and that brings the ball up to the Alberta 20 as the Dinos putting together an impressive drive here, trailing by 15, just about five minutes into the second quarter. Sanagra in the shotgun. Lots of time, and he is picked off. Alberta with their fourth turnover of the game as they snuff out that impressive looking Calgary drive. And who else but Tack Landry, who's been all over the field for the Golden Bears defense. Absolutely, that just looked like a great read. Almost like he knew it was coming. Expanded to his receiver, stepped in front, picked it off, great play. So another Calgary drive ends in a turnover. And Alberta will scrimmage first and 10 on their own 15 yard line. Brad Baker, handoff to Ilnicki. Ilnicki off the left side, and he's been quickly by the Dinos. He's just unable to get around the corner. Micah Tights in on the coverage to limit that game to about three. That front center of the, of the Dinos maybe getting a little ahead of themselves. Kind of collapsed down on the right side there, and that could have been a much bigger gain if it weren't for some arm tackling. Baker in the shotgun, Ilnicki off his right hip. Second down and seven. Passing down for Ilnicki. He's looking for a man and it bounces one hop in at the 30. Intended for Tyler Henry, who's got two touchdowns for the Golden Bears so far. That'll be third and long in a punting situation for Alberta. Uh, that's frustrating as a quarterback. Just doesn't step through the throw and deliver. Comes up short, it's unfortunate his uh, receiver was open and that could have been a big gain with a good throw. Wasn't much for contain on the outside. Baker punting from his own five yard line. Eric Newsel standing just on Calgary's side of midfield as the lone return man. Baker's punt. Newsel racing forward to pick it up at the Alberta 48. Hit immediately and nowhere to go for Eric Newsel. Calgary will get the ball at the 48-yard line. Uh, that often happens with short kicks. Coverage gets down there quick. Good job by U of A to not encroach on the uh, five-yard rule. Big shot. At least the Dinos hung on to it this time. Newsel with one of those fumbles earlier in the, in the game. This time he does hang on to it. And Sanagra and the Calgary offense right back onto the field. First and 10 at the Alberta 48. Play action. Actually, it's Josiah Joseph in a quarterback here. And that's complete to Alex Basilis up across the 40 yard line. It'll be close to a first down as the Dinos, we thought we might see Josiah Joseph at some point, and here he is midway through the second quarter. Yeah, again, reps, and uh, you know, Snagra did just throw an interception and take a couple big hits, so not a bad time to maybe switch it up and see what comes. Joseph, the former Okanagan Sun pivot under center on second and short he goes off the right side and should have more than enough for, for the first down Stano's receivers got to be patient there they're lucky they weren't called for an offside that's the last time you want to get last place you want to be called for an offside short yardage you're not even involved in the play the officials conferring here looks like the spot may be slightly short they finally do move the chains. It is a first down for the Dinos. Inside the Alberta 40. Joseph in the shotgun. Play action. Pulls it back in. Almost a great one-handed catch there by Vasilis, but he did well to get the one mid on it. Just couldn't pull it in with the second, and it's second and ten. Running a bit of a flood route type pattern, so short out, intermediate out, and a vertical to spread the defenders. But on those short passes, you have to connect. Uh, and despite them being short and seeming simple, they can be uh, tough to complete. Second down and 10, Josiah Joseph at the controls for the Calgary offense, looking to his left. 
Goes to the sidelines, has a man, it is complete. Jacob Esquerdo with the catch near the first down marker. Yeah, good timing route, designed to hit it right on the sidelines. Ball's there on time, receiver checks his feet, first down. Looks like they'll call him just short actually as he's about maybe an inch and a half away from that <laughs> first down marker. So Fair enough. He'll be third and very short for Calgary. Joseph strides up under center. And easily behind that push from the Calgary offensive line, he gained two or three yards there. That should easily be enough for the first down. Well, here's an opportunity for Calgary to uh, turn the tides a little bit and uh, make something of a red zone opportunity here, get some points on the board, and uh, take some momentum back. We have an injured Golden Bear on the play. It looks like just trying to get a number right at the 25-yard line there. Looks like a defensive lineman for the Bears. That's it's like number 97, Terrell Herring, receiving attention from the Alberta training staff. Yeah, unfortunately, in those situations, you end up sometimes just getting piled on, things get bent in funny ways and you don't have a lot of control over it. Uh, it's unfortunate to see when guys uh, aren't able to get up. Right there at the bottom of the pile, number 97, Herring. And uh, was able to roll over after that, but immediately the Grabbing a hamstring. Bears calling for the uh, training staff to come on. So here comes the Calgary training staff to help out as well and never something you want to see but always a danger in the sport of football that you can have any kind of injury like this. Absolutely I mean truthfully any sport of course but yeah football you know it's no secret it is a physical game and and these guys know what they're getting themselves into uh, and despite its physicality you know relatively there are uh, few injuries we think about how many collisions happen on a given play but unfortunately things do occur and uh you know, these, the training staff, I know uh, in my experience with the Dinos has always been top notch and all these schools provide some top caliber Perfect. therapy and, and uh, make sure that the athletes get taken care of. See Alberta head coach Chris Morris out there checking on his player. He's being checked out by the training staffs of both teams along with uh, the team doctor for the Dinos. Nick Matati is out there as well. Gives us an opportunity to look back at this game so far. And the Dinos have been able to put together a couple of drives here in the second quarter. Um, continuing here, obviously, it'll be first down when we do get back to play. But turnovers, again, have been the Achilles heel for Calgary. Three fumbles and one interception. And in a lot of ways, they're lucky to only be down by 15 right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, this, like as I said before, this is their opportunity to maybe try to turn that tide. But... Uh, you know, U of A is, has played well. They've they've done what they need to do. They've taken advantage when they can. And, uh, you know, a score here by the Dinos, it's still an uphill battle, right? Even if they manage to, to accomplish something here. So we'll see uh, we'll see what happens. But of course, this, uh, this is unfortunate, uh, both for in the individual and uh, also just for the flow of the game, et cetera. So hopefully uh, they're able to take care of them determine what the injury is, manage it, and uh, get things going again. As they continue to work on Golden Bears defensive lineman, Ty Herring, looks like they've rolled him onto the spine board now. And of course, they want to take no precautions with uh, any injury at this point. Oh yeah, absolutely. Or take all precautions, <laughs> yeah, I should yeah. say. Oh, better to to overdo it for sure. 
because um, I mean you never know. Although the, the way he was grabbing at his leg, etc., tells me that uh, you know they just want to maybe make sure that there's nothing uh, structurally going on there that could be impacted by walking him off, etc. But of course we're up in the booth, pretty far away. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Chris Moore is leaning in to talk to his player. It looks like they are going to call for the uh, for the Gator to come out. And again, it was a short yardage play for the Dinos. That just all kinds of traffic there in the box, and Herring unfortunately ended up at the very bottom of that pile with a lot of meat on top of them. Yeah, and it's, uh, it happens to the best of us, that's for sure. And uh, I know what it's like to deal with major injury and, you know, it's it's never fun, that's for sure. But on the flip side, uh, as I mentioned, these the training staff, the doctors, etc. you know, m medicine has come a long ways. And uh, so hopefully once they dis determine what the issue is, treat it accordingly, and uh, whether it's a long road or a short road to recovery, um, you know, the support will be there. Dinos faced a situation like this earlier in the year at UBC when offensive lineman Spencer Roy was uh, injured toward the end of the second quarter, and they actually brought up halftime in yeah. that scenario. Roy has uh, has made a recovery, and he's been back in the lineup for the last couple of weeks for the Dinos, so that's a positive sign, and certainly uh, we look forward to a recovery for Herring here as well. It's, it's not something you ever want to see. No, absolutely not. And uh, specific to that Roy incident, my understanding was he effectively fainted kind of after the play, which is, if anything, almost causes more concern because, of course, when you see a, uh, you know acute injury, you hear, see someone, you know, they grab at their leg, they get taken out of the knee, whatever, you tend to have a good idea of what may have caused it. But uh, as we've been dealing, or there's been a lot of talk and coverage around head injuries and that sort of thing, when a player just outright collapses on the field, I mean, you have no idea what could cause something like that. Most of the Golden Bears taking a knee on the sideline. Several of the defensive players on the field as well. And they have opened up the gate on the southeast corner of the stadium. There would seems be, would to be the ambulance entrance if they had called one. Yeah, there seems to be a fair amount of calm down there, which to me is a good thing. Because, uh, you know, if it was something uh, beyond, uh, like I say, an acute injury, I would, I would s think I would see you would see people <laughs> running and sprinting sure. and making phone calls. So, likely manageable, but uh, probably makes sense. Whatever it is to to get him to a hospital or somewhere where they can treat and and diagnose accordingly. As this continues, we're going to take a short break here on CanadaWest.tv. 7.44 remaining in the second quarter, and all eyes on Golden Bears defensive lineman Ty Herring. We'll be back. Run away, yeah, with me. Uh, 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 lost soul to me. 
trying to do it right. I've been living a lonely life. I've been sleeping here instead. I've been sleeping in my bed. Sleeping in my bed. So show me family. All the blood that I will bleed.
Back here at McMahon Stadium. Still all kinds of concern for Alberta defensive lineman Terrell Herring. He is on the stretcher. EMS attending here from Calgary. He'll be taken to hospital. Looked like his left knee was the... Uh, was the injury, and of course, with any kind of delay like this, there's always incredible concern on both sides. And 
he got a good ovation from the crowd when they lifted the spine board up onto the stretcher and he'll be loaded into the ambulance. And certainly our best wishes on behalf of the University of Calgary and Canada West, of course, U, U of A to, to him and we uh, wish him a speedy recovery. And the, uh, the athletic therapy staff, they train for this kind of stuff all the time. It's at least weekly. They're doing a spine board drill, and um, they always hope they never have to use it. But a scenario like this, uh, it's good to have professionals out there, and both teams' uh, medical staff look like they held this very well, very calmly, very professionally, and um, taking care of the athlete. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, calm is something that stands out to me, not that I've been around uh, too many uh, first responder scenes, but the calm that they demonstrate is always very impressive, and I think that comes from the training that you're alluding to. They've kind of been there and done that, fortunately, and uh, that it at least provides the best possible result for anyone that's involved. Again, the play happened on a short yardage situation for the Dino's offense as Josiah Joseph plowed forward for about a two yard gain and Herring was in the pile there and it looked like his left knee got rolled up on and obviously when there's an ambulance here it's a pretty significant injury so again we wish him all the best as a player you mentioned off camera that you were um, involved in a couple of games like this it's it certainly brings a whole different perspective to the game and can certainly be a downer but there's still like there's 37 and a half minutes left in this game how how do the teams respond to something like this both uh you know the, the dinos but certainly the golden bears to, to come back with one of their teammates down like this yeah i mean uh you know as i said everyone on the field knows what they're getting themselves into and that's why when something like this happens you get the mutual respect no matter what the relationship is like between the two teams because that could have been anybody and uh from there, you know, as we come back, who we do still have to play a football game. So now you got to wonder, okay, after that big break, who has the advantage right now, offense or defense? Uh, I would argue the defense does a little bit because offense tends to need a little, a little bit of a groove, a little bit of momentum uh, for things to really be clicking and, and firing. Uh, and uh, of course, that's been broken up here. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, transpires. But uh, for U of A, they're going to be motivated. They're going to want to, you know, win one for the Gipper so to speak. So we're back to football here. First and 10 for Calgary. And there's a give off the right side. Hard hit there on Alessandro Molnar is Tack Landry again in on the tackle for Alberta. It'll be second and about five for the Dinos. He really is all over the field. And uh, U of A did a good job of stringing the runner out. Uh, and he had a great lane inside out approach. Went at him and made a great hit and good tackle. Dino's trailing by 15 here. So we're at a midway point of the second quarter. Second and five, Joseph looking to his right, has a man complete. Looks like Thera down toward the five yard line. And Brendan Thera Plamondon has the Dino's knocking on the door. Yeah, U of A's running a bit of a zone drop there and uh, their deep man maybe giving a little too much respect to Plamondon. There wasn't really a vertical threat running a curl route. Need to come up and make a play on that. Too much room. Well done by the Dinos. First and goal from the five yard line as the Dinos try to get into the end zone for the first time today. Molnar, the lone setback behind Josiah Joseph in the shotgun. The give is to Molnar. He goes up the middle. He's gains a couple of yards before Tack Landry and a couple other bears there to stuff him up. Gain is, we'll call it two. It'll be second and goal from the three. Yeah, the inside group for U of A has done a pretty good job this game controlling things. Dinos, for the most part, have had more success off tackle and throwing the football. Um, but, you know, squeezing a little closer, you got three yards. This sets up a pretty good second and goal for U of C. Molnar again in the backfield. Looks like Brett Wade into the game for the Dinos as well. And the give is to Brett Wade, the defensive lineman. And Wade 
going nowhere. He ends up losing two yards on that, and the Dinos tried some razzle-dazzle there, and nothing doing. I'm struggling with that play. Uh, as a coach, I'm not exactly sure what the method to the madness is, other than maybe trying to put something on film for your opponents uh, to waste time and practice next week. Uh, otherwise, I don't really know. Give another look at that as Wade starts to his left and goes back to his right, and he's tackled right away. I'm going to assume that's not how they drew it up. So it's third and goal from the five. The Dinos will go for it here. And whistles sound first. Timeout. Looks like timeout called by the Golden Bears. Maybe make the Dinos think about this call just a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, just what we need, another break. But... Uh, Hey, fair enough. That's football. One other game taking place in the conference right now. It's Regina at UBC, and there are about four and a half minutes left in the first quarter. The Rams with a 5-0 lead over the Thunderbirds. And again, the winner of that will host the other Canada West semifinal next Saturday. It'll be Friday night in the case of a Regina home game. Rams and the Thunderbirds will meet again next week. Either way, the only thing left to be decided is where that game will take place. And right now the Rams on top by five. That strikes me as a, a good matchup. Two kind of bigger play teams. That's probably going to be a fun game to watch. Of course, UBC went into Regina last year and upset the first place Rams to advance to the Hardy Cup. Back from the timeout here, Josiah Joseph in the shotgun. Looking to his right, has a man. It's a touchdown, Dinos. Incomplete. Straight up dropped it. Jacob Esquerdo couldn't come up with that one, and the Dinos will turn it over for the fifth time today, this time on downs. And it'll be a long field for the Golden Bears, but again, Calgary with nothing to show for that offensive drive. Uh, I hate being a broken record, but uh, we've talked a lot about opportunities today. And uh, U of A making the most of theirs, and the Dinos seemingly throwing theirs away. Esquerdo sat down in that pocket had every opportunity to catch that ball. and Instead, it's first and 10, Alberta at their own five. And the give from Baker to himself. They run the play action. He has a man complete on the left side, up across the 20 yard line with the catch is Ben Kopchinski. Yeah, a little bit of a fullback out there. Nice little uh, play action fake, rolling around, rolling out. Got the underneath guy coming across, dumped it off, and uh, big load. It's a tough tackle for a DB to make right there, and uh, we're seeing the end result of that. Kopchinski in a receiver on that play. He's the backup quarterback and former starter for the Golden Bears. Definitely a load to take down as we have another injury delay. This time it's for the Dinos, it's Nathan, Nathan Mitchell. Mitchell. Yeah, he, uh, he wore, bore the brunt of that uh, contact there. Good job completing the tackle, but uh, he definitely lost that battle. And again, that's just it's part of the game. And uh, some guys, sometimes you're undersized and you still got to make the play and make a tackle and sacrifice your body. And that's what uh, Nathan did there. And you know, hopefully he's just a little bit lightly shaken up and we'll see him back in a few plays. Mitchell in the starting free safety role for the Dinos this afternoon as Schmidt moves into the halfback spot. Lots of musical chairs going on in the secondary for the Dinos with their injury and rest situation right now. Yeah, I uh, happen to work for Coach Rapini during the day, so I hear all about the different movements that are going on in the secondary, etc. And, uh, you know, as we've said many times, it's part of the game. Got to figure it out, get these guys some reps. Um. Schmidt moves over to the safety spot here, and that'll bring Jack Burns on at the boundary half position for the Dinos. First and 10, Golden Bears. Ed Ilnicki with the carry. He goes off left tackle, and he has a hole up across the 30 to 35, taking a Dino with him. And he dragged Jakub Jakubek for about five yards there before he was finally brought down, and a big run by Ed Elnicki makes it first and 10. Uh, he hits the hold hard. 
and makes the most of his opportunities, that's for sure. It gets right up in there. You know, an arm tackle is not bringing El Nicky down. He's driving through, carrying a load, just dragging the trailer. It's 18 yards for Eddie El Nicky, first and 10, Alberta at the 40. Dinos bring pressure, they give to El Nicky, he goes off the left side, and he's got room, Ed El Nicky up across the 50 to the 45, dragged down again, this time Cyril Owanabe in on the tackle for the Dinos, another big gain by Ed El Nicky, who's a beast to bring down. He's just finding tons of room, the Dinos are giving him too much space to work, they need to keep him contained, get shots on him early, he gets into the second level like that, and uh, it's going to be a long day for UC. 33 more yards for El Nicky. He's up to 97 and knocking on the door of that single season Canada West record. First and 10, Alberta. Play action. Baker looking left, has a man, and it is complete to Tyler Henry up past the 15 yard line. The Bears moving. Yeah, U of A's had some success on those corner routes today, working away from the uh, defender, quarterback. Smaller window to throw, but uh, if you can get it in the right spot, it's usually just the receiver in the sideline. It's a 25 yard play for the Golden Bears. First and 10 as they knock on the door here from the 12. Baker thrown to the end zone, it's caught. Tyler Henry, touchdown, Alberta. His third of the opening half. Picking on some of those younger defenders. Simple route combination. Well, out with a fly, clearing out, making some space. Good throw. And there we have it. And what a response by the Golden Bears after that lengthy injury delay. They are able to drive the field all the way from their five yard line. It's a 105 yard drive for Alberta. Ends up with Tyler Henry's third touchdown of this game. And the Dinos find themselves in the biggest hole of the season. They're down by 22. It's 23 to one with three and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Well, when you can hand the ball off a couple times and pick up, you know, 40 yards on the ground, that's certainly gonna help. And that's what you wanna see as an offense. You don't wanna have to throw coming out of your end. You wanna be able to just pound it out. And they did successfully. So the Dinos will look to get some kind of momentum going here before halftime. It's hard to believe we're not even at the half yet. Cole Cusman and Alessandro Molnar, the tailbacks back to... Check that, sorry, it's a squared and Noozle. This will be a big possession for the Dinos here. It's uh, not a lot going for them momentum wise. And as we head into halftime, if uh, they can at least move the football and gain a little confidence, hopefully put up some points. Uh, I struggle to see things changing much in the second half. Short kick. <laughs> Goes out of bounds at about the 35. The flag will come in for the illegal kickoff. And the Dinos will get a chance to make a decision here. Not sure if that was supposed to be a sky kick or an onside kick. It was kind of halfway in between and just did not work. Maybe trying to get a little too cute. So the Dinos will start with decent field position here at their own 40 yard line. Procedure, Alberta, that penalty is declined. First down. Adam Sinagra is back in a quarterback for the Dinos, so he got a chance to watch one series from the sideline. He'll check back in. Cole Kussman is the lone man in the backfield with him. Sinagra steps up and he is brought down. Jacob Narbonne, defensive lineman, pulls down Adam Sinagra. It's the first sack of the night for the Golden Bears. And that'll be second and long Dinos. A combination of a good rush up front and some quality coverage in the back end made Snagger pull that football down. Second and 14, Sinagra has some time, throws it underneath, complete to his tailback, Kussman. 
He'll get up close to the original line of scrimmage. But that'll be third down and a full 10 yards. And the Dinos unable to do anything on that drive. And Alberta's going to get the ball back here with plenty of time before the half. Bears doing a really good job covering up those receivers. Not many options for Sinagra. Has to pull it down on the first play for a sack. And on the second one, a little dump for nothing. Nico DeFonte into punt for the Dinos. Zajdal, the lone returner for Alberta, and he collects the ball at his own 25 yard line. Go, Adam, go, Adam, go! Running east west, and he is spun down by the Calgary defender. Looks like Alessandro Molnar on the tackle. Yeah, there was a key block by U of A. Uh, defender coming down from the Dinos on the left side, and uh, just took a little. Just a little chip shot right in front of the shoulder to keep it legal. Put him off offline and allow the returner to get outside. Ed Ilnicki in the I formation with Brad Baker as U of A goes back to work. Play action to Ilnicki. Baker rolls right, throws back across his body, complete up across the 40 yard line. That'll be. A first down for the Golden Bears. Just a simple little fake handoff, dump it over top of the defender. Uh, Juve's doing a good job of just slowly picking away, uh, not taking too many risks, and keeping it simple. They're up to the Alberta 43 yard line, first and 10. Hand off to Ed Ilnicki, and Ilnicki goes back to work. Gets a couple of yards before he's stopped up by the Dinos across the 45. Call that a gain of four. Second and medium coming up for the Golden Bears. Uh, if the Dinos want to do anything here before halftime, this is a big second and long. If they can hold them, get the football back, they've got enough time. Clock ticking down past the two-minute mark here in the second quarter. <laughs> Baker in the shotgun, two receivers left. He's looking that way, looking deep downfield for Tyler Henry, and Henry's got it at the 30. Tyler Henry up across the 10-yard line, finally brought down by Michael Schmitz. First and goal, Alberta. Yet another example of an effective corner route. I don't know if the Dino defenders are uh, shading themselves to the inside of receivers and giving up the outside, or if the uh, safeties over top aren't ro rotating enough. But uh, either way, uh, is having a lot of success. It's a 59-yard completion from Baker to Tyler Henry, who's he's been the player of the game so far. Ed elnicki has got all the headlines, but Henry with three touchdowns and that 59-yarder, first and goal. Golden Bears at the Calgary four. Baker looking to throw, has Tyler Henry for the touchdown. Corner route. You know, it's very effective when you get down into uh, the red zone area, you tend to have little or no safety help. Uh, defenders typically line up inside on their receivers to take away the quick hitters inside. And of course, that opens up the outside. The quarterback can get the ball in the right place on a consistent basis. That corner out route type pattern is, is very effective. Make it four touchdowns in the first half for Tyler Henry. Is that some kind of record? It's got to be close as the convert is up and through. And with 96 seconds remaining in the second quarter, the Alberta Golden Bears 30 the number one ranked team in the nation won. I got to say, I expected this to be a game for sure. I expected a lot out of U of A today, but 30 to one at halftime was not what I was expecting. Henry was seven catches for 132 yards and four touchdowns. Ilnicki, meanwhile, 12 carries for 101 yards. So he's one or two carries away from setting that conference single season rushing record. The Dinos held to under 130 yards in passing right now through the lion's share of the first half. 
Calgary with about a minute and a half left to see if they can get something going before the half. As the kick is back, collected by Eric Newzel inside his 10. Newzel runs east-west and brought down right away by the Golden Bears' Zach Mann. Long field coming up for the Dinos, and the Bears are feeling it right now. Oh, we talked about moment momentum, motivation with the injury earlier. The Bears are flying around, and it uh, looks like the Dinos are lagging behind uh, in every way possible. You know, on that play there, uh, Michael Schmidt ends up pushing his guy in the back. Probably should have been called for a clip, but actually made the tackle. Joseph back in at quarterback for the Dinos. He's in the shotgun. Handoff faked, and he throws it out complete to Thero Plamond. And Thero bounces off one defender, heads to the sideline, and steps out of bounds after a short gain. It's only about three yards. And it'll be second and long for the Dinos. A oh, good job staying on his feet, but uh, at this point, with this kind of score, got to keep some of that emotion contained. Uh, and let's keep moving the football before you get too excited. Joseph with Jordan Fasano in the backfield. And Joseph looking to his right, looking downfield, and just overthrows Justin Dashik by three or four yards. Nothing doing again for the Calgary offense as they have another two and out and will be forced to punt. Alberta gets the ball back again. Yeah, a bit of a hope and a prayer on that play. Alberta defender doing a good job using his position on the receiver. Uh, Dino receiver needs to do a better job of getting some space, keeping his arms moving and running, but I don't think that had a chance regardless. Defonte back to punt. Fonte will boot it. Good punt, takes a Calgary bounce and chases Zigel back inside his 25 yard line where he picks it up and is met immediately and bowled over by a trio of dinos. Oh, we got a late flag. It's good discipline by Calgary there not to take a, a no yards. It's tough in those situations to maintain that five yard halo. So the four touchdown catches in a game by Tyler Henry is the second most in Canada West history in a game. In a game, never mind a half. Never mind a half. <laughs> Dave Brown of the Dinos and Brendan Mahoney of the Simon Fraser clan oh, yeah. share the conference record with five touchdowns in one game. Unnecessary roughness, block in the back. U of A, number eight, 15 yard penalty, first down. So a big punt for Nico DeFonte. They tack on the 15-yard penalty, and it's first and 10, Alberta from the 10. With 52 seconds left in the first half. Give to Ed Ilnicki. He'll get up to about the 13-yard line. And I would expect the pairs to just hand this off. Continue to work the clock down, kick it away if they have to, and uh, head into halftime and feeling pretty good about themselves. Timeout is called by the Dinos as they look to get the ball back and try to do anything. Calgary's had a couple opportunities to score. Missed the short-ish field, the, the medium-range field goal, I should say, from Nico DeFonte, which is their only points of the game, but three fumbles, an interception, and a turnover on downs at the five yard line. You know, sometimes you wonder if teams, you know, e even want to win. <laughs> and of course they do. It's, you know, it's a bit of a facetious statement, but uh, with the types of mistakes and the type of play that we've seen, you do have to kind of question it uh, today. But of course, as we mentioned, there is a lot of youth on the field, et cetera, but that's still no excuse. If you're a top tier team and you expect to go to a Vanier Cup, et cetera, these guys need to perform. So we've said it many times, they're going to get their opportunities. So it's officially a three yard rush for Ilnicki. He's four yards away from the record, or two yards away from the record, excuse me. And 
flags fly. Early movement. We'll see which way they point. Looks like it's procedure against Alberta. Yeah. It's, uh, you come out trying to be sneaky like that and think you're going to be effective, and it just ends up shooting you in the foot. I don't necessarily agree with the di disagree with the decision, but uh, that said, everyone's got to be on the sa same page. It has to be truly disciplined for a hard count or anything like that to actually be effective. Offense number 64. Five-yard penalty, still second down. So that'll send the Bears back inside the 10 to about the eight yard line. Second down, Second down about 13 to go. Play action, Baker, he's looking downfield. And that falls incomplete. Intended for number 85, Nathan Rowe. And that'll bring up third down for the Golden Bears. That was a bit of an aggressive play call considering the situation, et cetera. Uh, I think U of A is maybe trying to send a signal to the Dinos. Um, but good coverage there by UC. Um, nothing happening. I think uh, I'm sure the Dinos will take a shot here when they get, their, get the ball back. Try to regain some... Uh, Confidence. It's Ben Kopchinski back in punt formation for the Golden Bears. Standing about seven yards deep in his end zone. He's just going to run around with this, try to waste as much time as he can. And step out the back, conceding the safety. So the Dinos get two points back with 30 seconds left. It's a 27 point advantage for the Golden Bears. The Dinos will bring the fire offense out onto the field. Yeah, absolutely. I will see them uh, definitely try to move the ball quickly. Um, they still have a timeout, so they'll be able to utilize the middle of the field if need be. But I would expect them to generally stick to the sidelines. Sanagra in the huddle for the Dinos. Got three receivers to his right, Dashik along with Thera and Basilis. And he does go across the middle. It's complete to Brendan Thera Pamanda up across the 40. It'll be a gain of about six. Second down and four. Plays about seven seconds. Are you kidding me? Sinagra sends three receivers to the left this time. Again, up across the middle is complete. It's Kevon John Clark. He gets across the 50-yard line. That'll be enough for the first down for the freshman. Yeah, situational awareness there. You catch that football, you got to be running pretty much straight for the sidelines. Uh, that little juke up field might have cost them. And Calgary will use their final timeout here with 13 seconds left. Those typical rules of catch the ball and get upfield don't necessarily apply in this sort of situation. It's kind of uh, upside down world when you're in fire fire. I think typically in a situation like this, the Dinos would be looking for Michael Klukas, but he's not on the field at this point. Klukas, of course, with that long touchdown on the opening drive of the Vanier Cup last year. One of the speediest receivers in the country. And as we mentioned, Hunter Carl, the leading receiver for the Dinos on the year, is out for today's game as well. So it's a patchwork offense, too, for Calgary. First and 10 from the 52, Sanagra in the shotgun. Another short crossing route complete for Thera. Thera tries to get outside, gets across midfield, does get out of bounds up near the Alberta 50. It's a gain of only about eight yards, and there's only five ticks left on the clock. Yeah, that's a little more of what I'm saying. Get straight to the sidelines, but <laughs> you got to remember this football field is 65 yards wide. It's a long run to get across when you catch it inside the hashes. 
And to your point about the receivers, I, you know, we've talked about it a million times, so I'm not going to repeat myself. These guys just, they need to make it happen. It doesn't matter who's on the field. You know, you got to score with, with whoever you've got. You've got to find a way. And so I think that's what Coach Harris is saying. Figure it out. Brady won. Tyler Ledwaz into this game. He's on the far left side. Sanagra steps up. He's going downfield and is incomplete, intended for Justin Dashik up near the 20 yard line. Zeros on the clock, and that'll do it for the first half. A stunner here at McMahon Stadium. The University of Alberta Golden Bears leading the number one ranked University of Calgary Dinos 30 to 3 after an impressive first half performance. We'll take a break and be back with the second half here on Canada West TV from McMahon Stadium. Joe McFarland, our on-field host, has Dinos head coach Wayne Harris with him. Down to you, Joe. Thank you so much, Dan. Yeah, coach, uh, walk us through that half. A lot of new faces, but not exactly the result that we're kind of used to seeing out here. Yeah, well, we're making way too many mistakes. You know, you can't turn the ball over four times in one half and uh, expect to uh, do too much on offense. We've had moved the ball, but uh, we're just not putting it in the end zone. What's the message for you guys going into the into the dressing room? Well, we just got to play, uh, stay disciplined and play one play at a time and just uh, pick away at this and play better football right now where they're getting outplayed. Coach, thanks for this. Good luck the second half. Okay, good. Thanks. thanks. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. Sexual violence is any unwanted sexual attention or act against someone without their freely given consent. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. We believe you. Sexual violence is complex and can include many different things, from a violent sexual assault, verbal sexual harassment, sharing explicit pictures or video, offensive language, or stalking. I believe you. I believe you. I may be such please. We believe you. We believe you. Sexual violence is never... Week 8 of the Canada West football season well underway. Here's a look back at last week's action with the Week 7 Plays and Players of the Week. A familiar face highlights this week's Canada West Football Players of the Week as Week 7 of the season took the field Saturday. This is not a broken record. Running back Ed Ilnicki is the Canada West Offensive Player of the Week after another dominant game on the ground for the Alberta Golden Bears. For the third time this season, Ilnicki is the conference's top offensive player as the fifth-year veteran rumbled for 279 rushing yards and three touchdowns on 29 carries in Alberta's decisive 49-23 win over the Saskatchewan Huskies. With the victory, Alberta kept their playoff hopes alive and Ilnicki continued one of the most dominant seasons in program history. The 2017 draft pick of the Ottawa Red Blacks ran his season rushing total to 1,309 yards and career total to 3,986, both of which are Alberta records. Defensively, there were no shortage of clutch performances around the conference this week, including UBC Thunderbird defensive back Stavros Katsantonis, who joined a select club of players to record three interceptions in a game. The Bakersfield, California product finished one pick off the Canada West single game record of four and became the 22nd player in conference history to record at least a trio of picks in the same game. Katz and Tonis' interceptions came in the second, third, and fourth quarters and helped UBC do an arrow 17-16 win over the Manitoba Bisons in Winnipeg. This week's special teams player of the week is Regina's return man Kyle Borsa, who despite falling 42-30 to the Calgary Dinos, had a big return day for the Rams. The rookie running back finished the day with 90 kickoff return yards, including a long of 34, and added another 25 punt return yards. The 4-3 and three Rams can still earn a home playoff date, as they'll take on the UBC Thunderbirds this Saturday in a showdown for second place in the conference. Be sure to watch all the Canada West football action on the road to the Hardy Cup by tuning into the Canada West Football Showcase or by watching online at Canada West TV. so far. Here's Ed Elnicki. He's got a hole. Ed Elnicki will take it to the 50. Ed Elnicki, can he bust away? One man to beat for Ed Elnicki! And he's going to be forced out of bounds at the 15. The two targets on the far right side. This time fakes it. Now he's going to take a look down the field for Nathan Rowe. That's up. Rowe's got it! Nathan Rowe does it again. Time after time, this kid. Chance to pick up that first down, but the holding call. Dinos rush four. Picton goes deep. It hangs in the air, and it's caught. 
and a big catch by Mitch Pickton, and there is your Canada West passing yards record for Noah Pickton. Rams get to the ball again, three by two. And that's a big sack. That's a huge sack. sack. Huge sack, his second of the game, Corey Robinson. Robinson's all over the field this game. He's looking over the middle, deep, has a man downfield. The ball is batted in the air, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 20 yard line, and the man, it's Katzentonis again, up to midfield, has the ball inside. Huge first down by Mitchell Pickton, has the Ram offense going. And again, the Dinos rush four. Long out, and it's picked off. There. This is going to go and all the way. The big men aren't going to catch up. For the touchdown. And there it is. Bears will attempt a 41 yard field goal here for Arthur. It will be his long on the season. And Arthur's kick is driven hard. And that one is right down the middle. And down it comes this time. It is received by Borsa. He'll have some escorts to the right. See if he can get the edge. He does. Return set up though. And that is a great return for the Regina Rams to. It'll be a 45 yarder here for Stanger. He could miss it and Andre Webster could run it all the way back. It's blocked. Alberto will block it. And it's scooped up there. My goodness, did he get up for that? Yeah, oh, oh, ridiculous oh, vertical. Oh, holy smokes. Yeah. Of it here in his opening half. Here's Baker. Ilnicki again. Ilnicki first down again. Ilnicki with some room right up the middle. And Ilnicki's going to take it all the way to the house. Second touchdown of the day for Ilnicki. Ed Ilnicki is having a monster year. He sits atop every rushing category in the Canada West standings, and it's not even close. Coming off a summer where he was drafted and made it through training camp with the CFL's Ottawa Red Blacks, Ilnicki was destined for a remarkable year. It was a huge confidence boost for me. And to say like, okay, I was able to prove that I deserved a shot at that level, and going from that training camp and, and having some pretty good success in the preseason games and like playing against really good athletes, guys from all across North America and saying like, I can compete with those guys. That confidence is showing on the field as the Golden Bears are trusting Ilnicki to deliver, giving him 111 carries over the first five games and it's paying off. Ed, you know, Ed's got another gear this year. He's trained hard and he's worked hard on his speed development and he's got that like, when you have an 80 yard run against Calgary, you're fast, right? I don't know that he had that breakaway speed so much in the first couple of years. I know he's been getting there and now he's finally got that. Ilnicki isn't worrying about winning the Canada West rushing crown this season. All of his focus is on the team. But if he were to maintain his position on the leaderboard, it would be a pat on the back for everyone on the field with him. Makes that guy miss and Ilnicki is, is off to the races. To, to me, that would mean that we did our very best job as an offense to run the ball really effectively. And that would mean that our receivers blocked as well as they could have and that our offensive line did their job and I made my reads when I had to. Averaging 165 yards per game with six touchdowns so far means that Ilnicki has got nothing but confidence for his offensive line on game day. I've got so much faith in those guys to fight for me every single play and to get their job done. And yeah, sure, you're going to miss a matchup here and there. You're going to play against a stud, but I'm going to take those five guys against everybody in the country for sure. Ilnicki's success isn't restricted to the field either. What makes him stand out is his performance in the classroom and the leadership in his community. He's, you know, a four-time academic All-Canadian. He's president of the athletics board here. He's, you know, 4.0 GPA, you know, first member of athletics to go through the Peter Lougheed Leadership College. He is an unbelievably talented young man and it's not just in football it's off the field as well but we've tried to build our program around having those kind of kids here and making sure we have those type of top academic kids as cornerstones in our program so having Ed be sort of our poster child right now for what we do is a really nice thing just because how great he is and everything earning his degree while leading the way in the football program has ill Nicky prepped to achieve great things once his varsity career is done whether that be another shot at the CFL or making a difference here in the community I've really enjoyed it all the way through. I've learned a lot of really cool things. I've found interests in things that I never thought I would be at the beginning of my degree, and I've found areas that I didn't even know existed. So I've been really lucky. Like between that and some work experience and that kind of thing, I really enjoyed it. But 
yeah, it's going to be a whole different world when you graduate in April, for sure. It'll be quite the change on the field once Ilneki graduates from the program at the end of the year. But for now, the University of Alberta still gets to appreciate a historic season by the running back. What a strong run from Ed Ilnicki. Coming to the end of halftime here at McMahon Stadium, the Alberta Golden Bears leading the University of Calgary Dinos by a score of 30 to three. Ben Matchett along with Drew Carpenter here in the press box McMahon as we bring you the action here on CanadaWest.tv and a chance to look at some of the highlights from the opening half. Or low lights, depending on which sideline you're on, Ben. Certainly for the Dinos, not much to speak of offensively. There's Michael Klukas with a well, they started, play. they started strong, but uh, since then it's been all U of A. Uh, of course, the turnovers have been a huge factor, um, but uh, definitely a lot of errors going both ways, as we see with the, the missed kicks in the first quarter. Sinagra taking his time and making some plays early on, but uh, of course, hasn't led to much for U of C. Sinagra with 10 uh, completions um, on 14 attempts for 99 yards and one interception in the first half for the Dinos. His counterpart, Brad Baker, number 11, 13 of 18 for 217 yards and four touchdowns. All four of those going to Tyler Henry. That's a bit of a day. Right here, we got a great battle for the football and receiver comes down with it, as they should most often in that situation. And uh, the start of the four touchdown first half. You're going to see a lot of corner routes here, as we talked about. Attacking that corner pylon, working away from the defender. It's the fourth time in Canada West history a player has picked up four touchdown receptions in a game. In a game. We're still in the, this is still the first half. <laughs> the record is five, jointly held by Dave Brown of the Dinos and Brendan Mahoney of the Simon Fraser clan. Yeah, well, we've seen two so far on this highlight package, and still two more to come. It's uh, hard to believe. Sinagra takes a hard hit there. He didn't come back in the following series, but did come back. This was on the uh, short, short yardage. yardage yeah. yeah, broke. Just no second level defenders. <laughs> Dinos with 14 carries for 65 yards along the ground. Molnar, who you saw in that clip, number 20, with 45 of those 65 yards. So not much else going on along the ground. The opposite is true for the Golden Bears and Ed Ilnicki, just two yards away from tying the Canada West single season rushing record. Yeah, nothing new for him, just running all over the place. That record is 1,415 yards. So we got an out route there instead of a corner, but still similar similar attack pattern. And there's oh. the fourth one in the final two minutes to Tyler Henry and the Golden Bears up by 27 as we head into the third quarter. And we didn't think we'd get to have this conversation in this <laughs> game, but the margin of victory is actually really important for Alberta because Coming into it, the thinking was that the only way the Bears would make the playoffs is if Manitoba beat Saskatchewan. But now, um, the two-way tiebreaker comes into play here because if Alberta hangs on to win this game and Saskatchewan beats Manitoba at home tonight, it ends up as a two-way tie. The Bears and the Huskies played twice this year. Each won one game at home, and they both won by the same margin. I believe it was 26 points. Um, yeah, 26, 49, 23 for Alberta last week against Saskatchewan. So then the next tiebreaker goes to total points for and against in the entire season. Saskatchewan has a 14 point edge in that category right now, but the Bears have made that up and more with their, their 27 point lead right now. 
And if they're able to hang on with this type of margin, it puts a lot of pressure on the Saskatchewan Huskies to uh, make the playoffs tonight. So all kinds of intrigue. And of course, the, the winner of that tiebreaker will be right back here at McMahon Stadium next week for the playoff game on Saturday. So lots going on, and it's not easy to kind of wade through all the time. I always understood that football was a relatively simple game, Ben. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and, and specific to that margin, uh, it's 15 points, correct? is what they need to, to hold on to. It's, a, it's at least a 15-point swing in Alberta's favor, yeah, yeah, for the Bears to make the playoffs. Well, looking good so far. And, uh, you know, going into halftime with uh, this kind of excitement like they had, uh, it's hard to see them not coming out fired up and ready to roll. Uh, so you see it better have a response early. Otherwise, uh, there might not be any point in coming back out. The Dinos did defer on the opening coin toss, so they... I would assume would take the ball here in the third quarter. There's a little bit of wind, but nothing compared to what we've seen in the last couple of games here. Yeah, I'd agree with that. The, the, the wind seems to be relatively minimal, um, swirling a little bit, but not overly strong or consistent. So I would think they would uh, take the football and, and like I say, try to get at them right away. Uh, you know, if the Dinos can score early uh, and start to change the flow of this game, it's not completely out of their reach. Uh, especially with the uh, capabilities that they've demonstrated over this year and, and seasons before. But uh, nonetheless, it's, it's going to be a tall order. And uh, I'm sure U of A, they've demonstrated they're up to the task. Last time we checked on the other game of the conference, it was 5 nothing for Regina over UBC. And the tables have turned significantly in that one. UBC scoring three touchdowns in the span of just under four minutes including two that were 31 seconds apart. So assuming there was a turnover in there and UBC leading Regina 21 to five with, they're inside the three minute warning anyway, of the second quarter. So the winner of that again, will host the other Canada West semifinal next Saturday afternoon. The first one of course will be right here with the Dinos hosting either Alberta or Saskatchewan. Well, it's proving to be an exciting game as I predicted. And uh, you know, that's what happens when you got big play teams. Uh, good athletes and, and you know coordinators that are willing to stretch the field and, and put the ball up uh, good things can happen depending on again what sideline you're sitting on story of the first half for the dinos was turnovers there were five of them total three fumbles and interception and one on downs as they went for it and third and goal from the five and that led to a 105 yard five play 105 yard drive by the Golden Bears. It took less than two minutes and that was Henry's third touchdown catch yeah, to cap that one off. From the Bears perspective, that was just about as textbook as it gets for driving the football field. So teams are back on the field here. As we get set for the third quarter, see what the Dinos coaching staff was able to relay to their team. Coach Harris, not the most fiery of personalities in there, but you think that if anything was going to get him worked up, it might be this. Uh, he is generally pretty even keel, doesn't come across as, you know, a yeller, a screamer. But I spent plenty of time around Coach Harris, and uh, make no mistake, he's a very intense man, very focused, and uh, is perfectly capable of getting elevated when necessary. The Dinos will take the ball to start the third quarter. J Jacob Esquerdo and Eric Newsel standing inside the Calgary 10 yard line, ready to accept the opening kickoff. And the second half is underway. Sends Newsel back inside his goal line. He's up across the 15, near the 15 at least. And that's where the Dinos will start off here in the second half, just shy of the 15-yard line. First and 10, Calgary trailing by 27. Well, if that's an example of what we're expecting to see for the next 30 minutes, U of A came out flying. Adam Sinagra still a quarterback. He's eight completions away from that Dino's single season completions record. And that one's tipped and almost picked off. It was intended for Tyler Ledwas, number 81. Shaden Phillip had a chance to haul that in, but just out past his fingertips and it'll fall incomplete second down. It's the uh, second example 
of the Bears showing that they've been watching a lot of film. Seems like they knew it was coming on that play. Sanagra in the shotgun. And he throws, knocked down again. This time it's Aaron Chabalo, number 33. Gets a hand on that Sanagra pass and a quick two and out by the Calgary offense as Alberta gets hands on both of those Sanagra passes. Yeah, can't forget about those linebackers when you're trying to complete it over the middle. They uh, sometimes get lost in the quarterback's vision and uh, you gotta try to throw in between them and not over them. So DeFonte goes back to punt. Zygdal number one, just on the Dino side of midfield and Calgary will instead concede the safety. And that makes it a 29 point lead for Alberta, 32 to three. There's a total of six safeties conceded in the Dinos game against the Regina Rams last week. Typically uh, weather related, but I think in this instance, you know, with the score the way it is, et cetera, get some field position back. If your defense can't stop them in this, in this sort of situation, well then, uh, what does it really matter, I suppose? Bears will scrimmage at their own 35 yard line after the safety, first and 10. Brad Baker with Ed Ilnicki on his right hip. The toss to Ilnicki, and he's up across the 40. And that should do it for Ed Ilnicki, the all-time single season rushing king in Canada West history as he gets another four yards there. That gets him over the hump and an unbelievable season for Ed Ilnicki results in the single season rushing crown. It's impressive when you think about uh, the running backs that have come through this conference over the years. Hats off to Nicky. He's got a chance at the 1500 yard season if he maintains his pace. Second and about six, Baker throwing to his left, that'll fall incomplete. The intended receiver was Tyler Henry. So the Bears get the record, but the Dinos get the two and out. It's a couple times that uh, Baker's underthrown his receivers. Uh, I don't think it's anything more than just really not stepping through it, finishing the throw. I don't believe he has anything, uh, any sort of injuries or issues with his arm. So Baker will punt standing on his 25 yard line back to receive for the Dinos is Eric Newsel at his 30. Baker, it's a good spiral punt taken by Newsel at the 35 and he's met immediately, sheds a tackle, but has nowhere to go, only about a two yard return for Eric Newsel. Special team coverage has been uh, quite good for the Bears. They've been getting down the field, uh, getting position, maintaining their lanes, and uh, forcing the Dinos returners to just head straight up field and not for much. Sinagra at quarterback for the Dinos. He's got Alessandro Molnar in the backfield, Basilis. And Ledwaz out to his right. Play action. He'll throw to the far side. That's caught by Tyler Ledwaz. And he sheds a tackle coming up the sideline across the 50. Tyler Ledwaz gets the first down catch for the Dinos. Yeah, another good example of catching the football and getting upfield, making a couple guys miss. Good individual effort there. That's what the Dinos need. They need to put that together over and over and over again now. Ledwell making his first appearance in the lineup in quite some time. He and Dallas both injured in the first game of the year against Alberta. Here's a run play to Molnar, and he gets a couple of yards before he's brought down by Alberta. Chabelo in on the tackle for the Bears. Short gain of about three. Another example of sprinting to the edge, trying to get to the, the off tackle spot as quickly as possible. Managed to do a good job turning back and inside. Uh, seeing a little bit of chippiness down on the field after the play. A game like this, uh, that sort of thing can happen. Hopefully they can keep it under control. Second and seven for the Dinos. Sanagra in the shotgun, empty backfield. Yeah. Quick crossing route intended for John Clark. And thrown just a little behind him and he may have been looking downfield before he caught that ball. Well, I think uh, the defensive lineman 
got his hands up and forced Sinagra to throw the ball a little bit behind the receiver. And when you're in a crossing pattern like that, uh, it becomes a really, really difficult catch. The Dinos get one first down on the drive, but Defonte back into punt. Punt falls short, takes a Golden Bears bounce, and is picked up by Zajdal at about the 30-yard line. Flag comes in for no yards. And it'll be about the 35 where the Golden Bears will start off this drive first and 10. Uh, it's tough for a coverage team when <laughs> kicker completely boots it and uh, you're already downfield. Maintaining that five-yard halo is next to impossible. No yards, Calgary, number 57. Five yard penalty, first down. Daniel Tights called for the no yards infraction. Could have gone to one of about eight dinos down there, I think. Exactly. They'll bring the ball up near the 40 yard line, in fact. So it's first and 10, Alberta, and Ilnick be in the backfield behind Brad Baker. To give his to Ilnicki. He's across the 40, up near the 45 yard line, dragging. Matt Carson, number 96. Gain of about five for Ilnicki, and it'll be second and five. Ilnicki is good, there's no doubt, but it's clear he's not a one-man show. You can see his uh, big body's in front, making things happen, and he has the smarts and patience to wait and let them do their job and then hit the hole. Play action to Nicky Baker rolling to his right. He's going to look downfield. Yes! Yeah! Receiver comes back to the ball, and it is complete. Nathan Rowe up at the 20-yard line. As he threw that into all kinds of traffic, and Rowe came down with the football. By all measures, that should not have been a completion. But receiver goes and gets it, and uh, defenders just not getting their head back, finding the football, getting a hand in the air. You got to react to the receiver's eyes and the receiver's hands in that situation. When you got your back to the football, that's the only indication that it's coming. Turn your head, try to get a piece of it, break the hands up. Great catch by the receiver. 46 yard play into triple coverage, and it's first and 10, Alberta. Inside the Calgary 20. Ed Ilnicki with the ball. He goes off right tackle, finds a hole up across the 10 yard line. And Michael Schmidt brings him down after a first down game. And he'll bring up first and goal for Alberta. Just looks like another day at the office for him too. Getting up off the ground, doesn't look tired, doesn't look banged up. Piece of cake, could do it over and over and over again. So the Bears leading by 29, looking for more. First and goal from the eight. Hand off Ed Ilnicki, he's across the five. Spun down inside the five yard line. Brett Wade with the contact for Calgary, second and goal coming up. Decent job by Calgary's defense to keep him out of the end zone. Holding the edge, forcing him inside, getting a piece, tripping him up, but uh, Ilnicki just keeps charging forward, keeps pounding it out. Second and goal coming up from the four yard line. Alberta looking to add to their lead. Play action to Nicky Baker looking to the end zone and it is caught for the touchdown by the backup quarterback, Ben Kopchinski. He's, uh, he's been a factor today. It's a good job finding some open air, open space. Uh, the defenders got stuck with their head in the backfield it looked like because uh, they were manned up uh, actually there was two defenders around him but uh, neither one chose to attack the hip and get up on on the receiver and I mean that's a relatively easy completion good throw by Baker the convert by Brent Arthur is good and six minutes into the third quarter it's a 36 point University of Alberta lead. They lead the Dinos 39 to three. You know, 
know, uh, in my day, of course, the roles were a little bit reversed. U of A was uh, a little bit more of the conference powerhouse, and we were maybe struggling a little more than, than we do nowadays. And uh, so a score like that wouldn't have been quite so alien, but uh, hearing you say it, it just, something sounds wrong about it. But here we are, and U of A has earned every, every point. Dinos are riding a 16-game on-field win streak against the Golden Bears. Alberta's last win over Calgary on the field was back in the 2008 season. Of course, there was the one forfeit by the Dinos in 2014 that was originally a 71-3 victory that ended up as a forfeit due to ineligible players. But the Bears looking good to end that streak for good as Calgary returns the open or the kickoff after that touchdown. Eric Newsel. Up across the 15 to about the 17-yard line, and that's where the Dinos will start as the offense tries to get something going. And how many times have we said that so far today? <laughs> yeah, coming a bit of a broken record. And the Bears continue to get downfield, swarm the returners, and force Calgary into long field positions. First and 10 Dinos at their own 17. Adam Sinagra is still in a quarterback. They give to Alessandro Molnar. He goes off the right side, finds a hole up across the 25. Still on his feet before he's brought down by a herd of Golden Bears. Game will be about seven or eight on first down for the Dinos. Yeah, glimpses of uh, success and, and well-executed plays, but of course, we gotta be doing this over and over and over again. Uh, if the Dinos can start stringing together, maybe uh, we'll see things change. I guess, again, Molnar in the game with the absence of Jeshwin Antwi and Robert Stewart. He gets the ball again, gets a hole up across the 30. Molnar to the 35 and the 40 before he's finally brought down. There's a positive rushing play for the Dinos as Alessandro Molnar moves the chains and more. Well, two in a row, established a pattern. Good job. Uh, being patient, waiting for the hole to open up, getting to the second level and accelerating through. Sanagra in the shotgun. Play action to Molnar. Sanagra throws complete for Alex Basilis. Basilis gains about five yards up across the 45 yard line before he's brought down. This is a little more reminiscent of how the Dinos started the game. Just chipping away, thinking and dunking. Five yards here, eight yards there. They can continue this pattern. Look for a more competitive Second remainder of the half. Second down and just over four yards to go from the 46. Sinagra throwing complete out on that far side and stepping out of bounds is Brenda, Brendan Theroplamonda, but he's up across midfield. And that's enough to move the stick. So the Ninos stringing together a couple of first downs here as they look to eat into this Alberta lead. Yeah, U of A seems to kind of backed off a little bit too. They're playing a little bit more zone coverage, um, playing a little softer. And part of that might be the score and the situation where, hey, you can't, you're not gonna beat us with five yard outs all day long. At this point, the Dinos and Bears have to consider that they may be playing each other again next week as Sinagra finds a wide open Basilis, but the ball is... That's gonna be a complete pass. Popped loose. We'll see, it looks like they're they're discussing it. Plamondon did come up with the football for the Dinos. Uh, I'd be surprised if they declared that a reception. It was hit almost immediately. They are ruling it a catch and a first down, so it'll be a catch and a fumble for Basilis and Thera. Able to jump on the football for the Dinos to avoid a fourth fumble turnover. A little bit surprised by that. I feel like generally uh, the officials are a little more um, conservative with those types of calls these days. Uh, the whole controlling the football, making an athletic move, all that sort of thing at every level of football. I um, feel like that really plays a factor. But Alberta nonetheless. Coach, sorry, Alberta head coach Chris Morris talking to the officials on the sideline here. Of course, there's no video replay in U Sports football. No, there is not. But what, what I was going to say, though, was uh, nonetheless, 
you're going to get hit anyways. You might as well catch the football, as the saying goes. Looks like helmet right on the football. Just jarred it loose. That's a good tackle. Great close by the defender. As a receiver, it's look, reach, catch, tuck and tap. You got to tuck that ball away, get the other hand on it, protect it as soon as possible. So they finally get it all sorted out. And at the end of it, it's a first down for the University of Calgary Dinos at the Alberta 39. <laughs> Adam Sinagra in the shotgun. Looking to his right. Through his reads, flags come in. Sinagra running laterally across the line of scrimmage is complete to Brendan Farrell-Plamonda, and he's knocked out of bounds inside the 30. But we'll see what this flag is. Two of them on the field. Got to think it's a hold. Just based on kind of where the flag was thrown and when. That's... Uh, Play lasted a really long time. Often it's very difficult for lineman, receiver, anyone to maintain a block that long, but we'll see. The indication is illegal contact against the Bears twice. So that's got to be a jam downfield. So there were two illegal contact penalties against the Bears. Both of them declined, so the gain will stand instead. Pass interference against Alberta. And the Dinos will take the ball just outside the Alberta 25-yard line. Now, of course, the defenders have five yards to work with to get hands-on, but once you get past that limit, you got to let the receiver run clean. Sinagra looking to his left. And that one's batted down by the Alberta front again. The third or fourth one of those that we've seen tonight is Bears just in the right spot, throwing their hands up, and I believe it was Tack Landry. Yeah, they're doing a good job getting getting upfield, getting their hands in Snagger's face, and the Dinos alignment have to deal with it. It's, uh, it's unfortunately it's it's easier said than done, but you got to get those hands down. Second and ten from the 26. Sinagra flushed out of the pocket, still lots of room, flag comes in, and that'll fall incomplete. This one you would think would be holding. And holding is the indication. Yeah, as I said before, it's uh it can be tough to maintain a block for a really Calgary, long period of time. The penalty is declined, third down. And as uh, fun to watch as it is, to see a quarterback running around in the backfield and making plays, etc. Um, it can cause a lot of headaches for you the guys a, up front. We get another look at it here, and it's the hold probably right here that draws the flag. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, we were just talking about getting hands down. It looks like maybe tried too hard to do that. Third down and 10. The Dinos are going to go for it, and why not? Adam Sinagra in the shotgun. He's flushed out, rolling to his right, looking for Brendan Thero Plamondon up at about the 12 yard line, and it's incomplete. The Bears got a hand in there. Horeliak, number 22, in on the coverage, and the Dinos will turn it over on downs. Uh, looked like uh, just great coverage. Right on top of the receiver, hand in. And that's going to be a tough catch. As a fifth year player, I know Pomonen definitely expects himself to make that play, but uh, you know what? Sometimes it just doesn't work out. Timeout on the field here. The Golden Bears leading the Dinos 39 to 3 with five and a half minutes left in the third quarter. The Dinos will be home next weekend as they host one of two Canada West semifinals. Again, they will take on either the Golden Bears or the Saskatchewan Huskies, depending on the final outcome here and in Saskatoon tonight. Calgary did clinch home field advantage throughout the playoffs last week with their win at Regina. And if they were successful in next week's game, would host the 
81st Hardy Cup on Saturday, November 11th. But lots of football to be played before then, and they're going to have some uh, work to do next week heading into the playoffs, and that's not necessarily a bad thing for the Dinos and coaching staff to have something to, to work on with the team heading into uh, the postseason. No, certainly you want to be sharp right off the bat going into the playoffs, and uh, if this scenario looks to repeat itself as it does at the moment, uh, you know the Bears are going to have a lot of confidence coming out of here, being able to come on the road, win a football game, and get to come back and try and do the same thing. So uh, the Dinos are definitely going to have to be fully prepared for that game, and uh, you know it'll be a good test. So after the turnover on downs, the Bears scrimmage at their own 25, first and 10. Brad Baker giving final instructions to his offensive line. Fakes the handoff to Ilnicki, he rolls to his right and completes the pass to Ed Ilnicki up across the 30-yard line, brought down at about the 32. Corey Robinson and Cyril Owanabe in there for the Dinos. Bears do a good job of executing that little underneath play. So it's a fake handoff with a reverse pivot. Uh, the running back comes back across the line of scrimmage. And it's kind of like a pick and roll in basketball, more or less. A uh, little one-two combination. Gains about six. Call it second and four. This time they do hand off to Il Nicky. Goes to the left side. And the Dino's there to stuff him just as he got past the line of scrimmage. And that should be a third down. Yeah. Not much there for Ed Ilnicki that time. I'd expect U of A to just continue pounding the football now. The clock is there for Ed, certainly, as it ticks down. 4, 18, 17, 16 here in the third quarter. Comfortable 36 point lead for Alberta. Eric Newsel back to return the punt for the Dinos standing on his own 35 yard line. And he catches it in the air at about the 37, reverses field, finds a small hole before he's gang tackled by the Bears just across the 40 yard line. Reasonable field position coming up for the Dinos. You got to think, I, we haven't seen the Dinos take many shots deep. That's the one thing we haven't seen so far in this game. And at, at some point, you question whether it's even worth it at this point <laughs> to, uh, to, to pull that out, knowing you could be seeing this team again next week. Yeah, I think at this point, uh, again, going all the way back to the youth that's on the field, just getting as many reps as possible is really what matters. Josiah Joseph's in a quarterback play action. Joseph with the keeper on the right side. He gets up to about the 47 yard line. Gain of about six for Josiah Joseph. So I think at this point, you know, the outcome of the game really doesn't matter. It never did for the Dinos. So I think more than ever, you want to just try to put together drives, pick away, execute, execute, execute. We're, this is basically practice for the Dinos now. Second down and about five. Josiah Joseph in the shotgun. Waits, has a man across the middle, complete. Alex Basilis up to midfield, and that'll be enough to move the six. First down, Dinos. Yeah, just finding the short curl over the middle. Easy, easier completion. And uh, again, continues to move the drive and get those reps. Three receivers out to the left for Joseph. He keeps the ball, decides to run for it, backpedals his way up towards the 45 yard line and the first down marker. So he spun off a couple of would-be tacklers and got about nine yards on the play. Now that's something you might want to think twice about, of course, even though he technically is the backup, etc. Again, we're going into playoffs and every Every injury counts. Uh, I mean, it, you could say that at the beginning of the season as well, but uh, you don't want to put yourself at risk, especially in a game like this at this point. Joseph stays in in the short yardage formation, and he gets a big push from the offensive line, gets up across the 45, and easily enough for the Calgary first down. The 
The Bears are definitely playing a more relaxed defense, though, because you notice they're not flying around like they were earlier, um, of course, in, in the position of power at the moment. They just want to keep the Dinos from going deep and uh, make them really earn it. Similar score in Vancouver at halftime right now is the Thunderbirds leading Regina 35 to 5. In that battle for second place, Cole Cussman with the ball carry there for the Dinos gets two or three yards up to the 41. will be second and medium. Yeah, that uh, Vancouver Regina game. Again, I, I expected a, maybe a higher scoring affair, but I don't know about quite so lopsided. It's 35 unanswered points for UBC at this point. Joseph looking to his left, has a completion up near the 40, needs to get upfield, and he'll be stopped near the 35 yard line. That's Brendan Thera Plamondon. Looks like he's about a yard short of the first down. That's a good example of uh, some open field tackling. More or less a one-on-one -on -one situation, although there was a little bit su of support in behind. And uh, just taking a good angle, cutting the receiver off, getting a shoulder in his chest, and taking him down. So Brett Wade back on the field for the Dinos here. The defensive lineman. He's got the pink shirt tail hanging out. The handoff to Cole Kussman, and he is stopped up. Might have gotten it on his second effort. We'll have to see where the spot is. Looked like initially he didn't get there, but... Uh, definitely took a big shot, but got a second chance. And of course, you never know with this stuff. <laughs> it's such an inexact science football. Measure for an inch, but they... <laughs> when they're putting that flag on the change, like, yeah, it looks about right. Yeah. But it goes both ways, it does. right? And these officials, they do a good job. It's it's a thankless job. <laughs> it's, it's a hard game to officiate. It's too. not a hard. It's not a high-paying job. It's uh, truly a team effort for them, uh, more so than most sports. I'm going to call this a short, and it is by about six inches. The guy knows turn it over on downs one more time. I believe that's the seventh turnover of this contest for Calgary. I was going to say that pretty much sums it up. Pretty much sums it up. But good to, hey, hats off for U of A. They could very easily at this point play a little more lax and they're bringing it. They're bringing it, they're earning it, they're owning it. Baker and Dilnicki in the backfield. At this point, the Bears are just trying to win by as many as possible to improve their chances of making the postseason. And Ilnicki gets the handoff up across the 40 yard line for another six yards for the fifth year Alberta senior. Just grinding. And you have to as a running back, no matter how prolific your numbers are, they're not all gonna happen on the big gains. Sometimes you just gotta grind it out, pound it out. And he's obviously no slouch. That's 18 carries for him, 19 now in this game. This should be the final play of the third quarter. Baker throwing has Kopchinski and he's brought down just across the 30 or the 45 yard line. That'll be enough for a first down on the final play of the third quarter here at McMahon Stadium. No offense from Calgary and the Golden Bears are feeling it. 39-3 Alberta through 45 minutes. You're watching Canada West football on CanadaWest.tv. Ready to go, they are members of the Rebels Pee Wee football team. All right, let's go up to Dino Vision and let us play the Coffee Cup Challenge. All right, you guys are way too young to be playing or to be drinking coffee, right? Absolutely. Starting under number one. So follow closely. Oh, too easy is what he says. All right, starting slow, but trust me, it goes crazy in, in a minute. I think it's doing all right. I, think I don't blink too bad yet. All right. Oh, boy. That's where things went a little crazy. All right. It is it under number one? Is it under number two? Is it under number three? You're getting under rebel teammates to help them out. All right, boys. What's your final answer? Number one, please. Wow. All right, let's go back to the vision. Let me see. Is it under number one? It is. Absolutely. Job well done, you guys. Tell me a little. Job well done. 
done. We know we got a great prize from the dinos. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the whole team. You are and you are the University of Dinos. Through three quarters here at McMahon Stadium, 36 to three, the Golden Bears in front. But if you look at these stats right here, it's not that much of a difference statistically. The Dinos out um, with a higher level of uh, possession time over the Golden Bears. Calgary's run 61 plays against just 43 for U of A. And yet it's a 36 point difference. And you, the only thing you chalk that one up to is seven turnovers. Turnovers and, and taking advantage of opportunities. And U of A has done a great job of that. When they've been down in the red zone, they're scoring, they're making things happen. And the Dinos simply aren't. And then obviously turning the ball over. Ed Ilnicki with 19 carries for 134 yards for Alberta. Baker 17 of 23 for 279 yards and five touchdowns. For the Dinos, Sinagra 17 of 27. So he's just one completion away from that single season record, but we may not see him again for the rest of the night. We'll have to see what the coaches decide. Here it's Alberta with the football, looking downfield. Haven't called his name for a while, but Tyler Henry's been a big piece of this win for U of A, and he's up across the Calgary 50. Having a career day. Great job on the deep out route. Calgary's playing a little bit soft. Of course, younger defenders in there, maybe not quite as aggressive as you'd like to see them if you're a Dino's DB coach, but uh, good job getting open and nice throw by Baker. Easy peasy completion. First and 10 for the Golden Bears at the Calgary 47. Give us Hill Nicky and he was first contact made in the backfield, but he still managed to get a couple of yards out of that, dragging Micah Tights and a couple of other Dinos with him. Now I realize that U of A needs to keep the score up and um, is playing for points, et cetera. But on the flip side, I am a little, I'm curious to see, you know, when Il Nicky comes out of the game. At what point do they feel comfortable that they have it and they want to save him? As it stands right now, Saskatchewan would need to beat Manitoba by 23 points. Bears looking for more. They find Kupchinski, and he's a beast to bring down. Up across the 35-yard line, Ben Kupchinski, the current and former quarterback, moves the sticks for the Bears. Bit of a unique athlete, kind of a tweener. He's uh, a different build, etc., but uh, very effective. Gets out, is able to move around well in space. Uh, obviously catches the football well, and is not afraid to deliver a blow. First and 10 again, the Bears driving at the Calgary 34. Fakes the handoff to Nicky Baker under pursuit in the backfield and finds a man up across the sideline as Ben Kopchinski across the five dives in and they'll call him down at the one yard line. Ben Kopchinski dove for the end zone, not quite, but the Bears are right there again. Oh, the guy can move. Great job by Baker. Just holding, holding, holding. Finds the open man. Turn, get up field, full speed. Going for it. I, I thought he was in the end zone. He had to tiptoe the sidelines a little bit to get that. Switch the ball and... Uh, hand down. <laughs> hand yeah. down at the one yard line. Yeah. And we have an injured dino on the far side of the field. It's like number two, Dean Leonard just on the sideline at about the two or three yard line as he's attended to by the Calgary training staff. It's not uh, the first time the Dinos had a DB down after an altercation with uh, Kuczynski. He is a load.
Well, U of A continues to pile it on. And the Dinos don't seem to have an answer. Leonard helped to the sideline. There's one more Dino down right on the goal line as well. Try to get a number. It looks like Jack McEwen, number 93. And McEwen will be helped off as well. Yeah, he looked like he might have just been a little bit winded based on his uh, body language. Oh. So after that, with 13 minutes to go in the fourth quarter, it's first and goal, Alberta, from the one-yard line. Brad Baker under the center, dives over the top, touchdown, Golden Bears. U of S coaches are probably a little bit upset about this. But uh, for anybody that's been watching the whole game, the Bears have earned every single yard, every single point, and uh, just absolutely and wholeheartedly out executed the dinos full marks absolutely for this likely victory 13 minutes is a long time in canadian football but doesn't feel to me like there's much of a comeback brewing on the red sideline i bleed red and gold but uh it ain't happening <laughs> Forty-five to three, the score pending the convert, and a flag on the play as they will call the time count violation against U of A. It's like a substitution Alberta issue for the Golden Bears, the so they'll try the convert from five yards back. Now a seventeen. And a conference good. And that makes it Alberta 46, Calgary 3. 12 minutes and 50 seconds left in the fourth quarter. I got to say, I'm actually pretty happy about this outcome. And what I mean by that, of course, it's no secret, I, I am Dino's alumni and I support the team wholeheartedly. But U of A has had a tough go over the last decade and it's really tough to compete when you're in a provincial rival has been so successful success breeds success it makes it that much harder to recruit uh you know it, it's an uphill battle and uh so it's good to see them back competitive and uh putting up a, a game like this well it's good for the conference and good for you sports exactly. football too to have you know <laughs> there's we've said it all along and alberta has struggled in the last several years but um They've still been able to pull off the odd victory here and there, and for them to be able to come back as we see another big hit by the Golden Bears on special teams. I believe that was number 15, Shaden Phillip. He's getting down the field. But you're right, Ben, absolutely. And, and parity uh, in the conference is a good thing because you could argue that over the last decade there's been very little of that, and uh, it's been tough for teams coming out of Canada West to compete out east, generally speaking. Of course, UBC being the, the lone exception to that when they won the venue a couple years ago. First and 10 for the Dinos. At their 16 yard line, Josiah Joseph still in a quarterback. Fakes the handoff, Joseph rolling to his left. Has Basilis complete, he's up across Josiah the 25 Joseph near the 30. That'll be enough for a first down. Pretty good uh, play action there, the front seven was definitely sold on it. Allowed Josiah plenty of time to roll out and find his receiver. Wind starting to pick up here in the booth. fourth quarter and the booth, yes. <laughs> First and 10 dinos. Joseph looking across the middle, decides to run it himself. Joseph flag comes in, he gets up close to the 30. Gain is about two pending the orange nylon. You gotta assume a holder, a clip, 
based on the, the positioning of the call. Yeah. Holding, Calgary in with 63. 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. That'll push the Dinos back inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. As they reposition the football. I like it when the officials hold themselves accountable. It's not a nine and a half yard penalty. <laughs> it's a full 10. First and 20 for the Dinos, Josiah Joseph. And that's incomplete. Basilis stretched out for it on the ground, but it was a one hopper into him. It'll be second and very long coming up. Yeah, we've seen that uh, from Baker on the other side a couple times. First time for the Dinos, just coming up short on the throw. And uh, typically that's either footwork related or on the release. Just not snapping through that football and finishing it. Joseph has Jordan Fasano, number 27, in the backfield with him. Fasano breaks off to block. Joseph has a man. It's complete up across the 25-yard line. That's the first time we've seen Alex Groshak. Number 16. Number 16. Makes the catch. And the freshman gets about nine, maybe eight. And another drive sputters for the Dinos, and they'll be forced to punt as Nico DeFonte back on. Another example of good tackling by the Bears. Got a uh, defender inside and outside, working together to squeeze the receiver, laying a big hit and keeping him short. Defonte gets a good punt into the or with the wind. And it forces Zajdil back inside the 20 yard line to pick it up at the 18. Flags come in as Adam Zajdil brings it across the 30 yard line. A couple of flags there, likely in illegal block territory. Number 85, Alex Basilis getting some assistance. We'll get another look at that return. A couple of blocks as two dynamos go down. I've seen a, a larger return. percentage. Oh, Alberta number 24, 10 yard penalty, first down. I've seen a higher percentage of dinos on the turf today, getting help from the training staff, etc than uh, we're used to seeing. And I think that's just uh, the consequence of U of A owning this football game and really beating up on the Dinos physically. So after the penalties, the ball placed on the 10 yard line with 10.39 to go, it is first and 10 Alberta. Ed Ilnicki still back there with Brad Baker. And the give is to Ilnicki. He's met by Corey Robinson right away, but still manages to get another four or five yards out of the deal. It's a gain of five, second and five, Alberta. Pumping those legs, carrying that load. That's a lot of extra weight to be hauling on your back, but uh, keep driving, stay low, and you're able to pick up an extra few yards. And that's how you have a career and record season. A hundred and forty two yards now on the ground for Il Nicky and he's looking for more. He goes across the right side, gets across the 20 yard line up to the 22. There's another seven yards for Ed Il Nicky. Adding to his total. A lesser running back may find that hole but then might not accelerate accelerate through it like Ilnicki does. And uh, he takes the time to not only get himself in position, but hits it hard. First and 10 Alberta at their own 22 yard line. 
Baker fakes the handoff, goes across to Ben Kopchinski, and he's got it up near the 40-yard line. Ben Kopchinski again, tough to bring down. Gain of 18. He's having himself a day. It's nice to have a guy on your roster like that that can feel comfortable in the middle of the field. Big guy like him, he's not going to be afraid about getting rocked, knocked down like a lot of receivers are. He's standing there with confidence. Six catches for 88 yards for Kupczynski. Three Golden Bears, or two already over 100 yards. He's 12 yards away from that feet again as Ed Ilnicki with the football gets up close to the 50 yard line. He's brought down by Matthew Lucision, number 26, after a gain of about eight. Bears just keep trucking, keep churning those yards out. Not a bad effort at the end to make a tackle by the Dinos, but too little too late. Eight yards is, is way too late. You need to be making that first contact after three tops. Second down and three. Baker throwing to his right, complete. Yeah, that's enough for the first down and number 87, Colby Miller. He gets his first catch for Alberta. Hey, I'd like to see your defenders being a little more aggressive in a down and distance situation like that. You only need a few yards to pick up the first down. You gotta anticipate that short route. Baker's had himself a day too. He's 22 of 28 for 365 yards and five touchdowns. He's throwing at 78.6%. Impressive outing for the Alberta pivot. As he hands off. This time it's number 21, Andre Webster with the carry. So we'll see if the Bears have decided to rest Ilnicki for the rest of this game. So he stands on the sideline, hands on his hips. I think the toughest decision for the Bears today is who gets the game ball. Right. <laughs> Second down, seven. Henry with four touchdowns, or Ilnicki with 156 yards on record. Second down and about seven. Baker throws complete to Tyler Henry across the 45. <laughs> I can't imagine Baker's had too many days with numbers like this. Braden Laurie, number 41, with the tackle for the Dinos. It's uh, an impressive feat as a quarterback as well. Ball up to the 43-yard line. That's enough for a Golden Bears first down. Past the halfway mark here of the fourth quarter. Alberta in control, 46-3. Brad Baker looking to add to his totals. He's going deep. Had a man just inside the goal line. Looking for Tyler Henry. Would have been his fifth touchdown of the game. Falls incomplete as the Dinos had solid coverage on him that time. At this point, why not take a shot? Yeah, Michael Schmidt did a good job of staying inside his safety there, getting over top of the receiver and just giving him nowhere to go. That was all positioning. Second down and 10 for Baker and the Golden Bears at their Calgary 43 yard line. Ilnicki is back in the game. They decide to throw. And it is a one hopper in for Nathan Rowe. Looked like the Bears had a bit of an option route going based on uh, the receiver looking inside despite the outside throw. And uh, just picked it up too late. Unable to adapt and end up with an incomplete pass. Bears will punt here. Baker, who's he spent a lot of time on the field. He's in punt formation every time as well. Newsel back on his five yard line to return. Bears will let this clock run as long as they can. Baker. Puts the boot to it, trying to pin the Dinos, and it's caught by Newzel on the numbers at about the 10-yard line. He spins up across the 15. 
Brought down by Alberta's number 14, Dylan Niedermeyer. Juve is going to be very happy with their special teams. They've done a great job today of positioning their kicks and more importantly, getting down on top of them, being disciplined and not allowing much for returns at all. Six minutes and three seconds to go here as we run through the playoff scenario one more time. So the Dinos clinched first place last week, as we know, and will host next week. The longer this goes, the more likely it is that it's the Alberta Golden Bears that'll be right back here as If Manitoba beats Saskatchewan tonight at Griffith Stadium in Saskatoon, Alberta will qualify for the playoffs. If Saskatchewan wins, they need to win to keep their hopes alive, and then we have the whole points differential. Come on, Ben, I'm do the math. Tried. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's 43 points right now, so at the moment, Saskatchewan would need to win by at least 29 <laughs> to bring us to the... Could we be headed for the coin toss to decide the final uh, playoff team in Canada West? No kidding. Um, Saskatchewan coming into this weekend had a 14 point edge in the points for and against differential over Alberta. All of which could have been avoided. The Bears missed a, a late field goal in the uh, game against Saskatchewan last week that would have given them the head to head tiebreaker, but instead they're tied in points for and against. Well, they put up a good an effort today as, as you could hope, that's for sure. It was a tall order coming in here and uh, they executed. Six minutes and three seconds to go in this one. Calgary Dinos with the football. Josiah Joseph, the handoff to Jordan Fasano, number 27. Fasano breaks a tackle. He gets up close to the 25-yard line. And a solid second effort by the son of the former Dinos head coach, Tony Fasano. Yeah, Tony was my coach. And I remember when Jordy was this big. And for those that can't see us, that's about knee high. <laughs> And you're not that tall. <laughs> no, I'm not especially tall. <laughs> Gain of about seven or eight for Fasano on first down. It'll be second and short. Give right back to Fasano. He reverses field. Ball pops loose. Who's got it? Golden Bears say they've got it. We'll see what the official do to sort this out as they dig through that pile. A couple of red jerseys there as well. And it is Golden Bears football. Nieder, Niedermeyer number 14 with the fumble recovery for Alberta. And that's the eighth turnover of the game for Calgary. And that about sums it up. Well, U of A's playing like a team possessed. Uh, they just are keeping the pedal to the metal. They're not letting up. And uh, I said I was encouraged and I remain so. It's, uh, it's good to see. The Dinos are really going to have to execute their game plan next week. Assuming we're here based on the math scenario. Saskatchewan does have their work cut out for them tonight. Certainly. Baker, give to Ilnick. He's still in the game. And he's tripped up by Boston Rowe. Gain of a couple, maybe three, second and seven. As much as uh, U of A doesn't want to let up, I am still a little bit surprised that you know, Nicky remains in the game. At this point, uh, I would think that you'd want to give him a little bit of rest, just make sure nothing bad happens. Because you're definitely going to need him next week, assuming you are playing again. Baker, play action to Ilnicki. Decides to throw, has Ilnicki. He catches it at the 20 yard line. Brought down by Micah Tights across the 20. There is a flag. Looks like it would be short of the first down. And right here is a good example of what I'm talking about. This is a pretty risky play. You got a receiver in traffic with his hands way above his head like that. That's you get a good shot to the ribs. Bad things can happen. So, uh, I don't know, just my thoughts. I'm not the one calling plays over there, but uh, I may uh, start to steer the football away from him a little bit. Flip side of this is if 
the Bears somehow don't make the playoffs. This is the last game of his Canada West career. Unnecessary roughness, clipping. U of A number 54, 15 yards, dead ball spot, and it'll be third down. Jonathan Harkey, number 54, called for the clipping violation. That was short of the first down marker, so they'll move it back 15 yards, and it'll be third down. As much as you want to do right by your senior players, I think uh, your job as a coach, first and foremost, is to see the big picture. And Whatever they choose to see is that big picture is their choice, but uh, I think that, you know, their their perspective, if he's still in the game, it's to run the score up further, not for any other reason. Third and 17, and Baker into punt. Newsel standing on the goal line. And Baker will boot it into the end zone, gets caught up in the wind. And Newsel doesn't get there. It's picked up for a touchdown by Alberta. Newsel touched that, and the Bears got there first. And you got to think that's going to seal it for U of A. <laughs> it was sealed a long time ago. The playoffs, but, uh, I mean, the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're right. I, at this point, you know, to see U of S come out and do what U of A has done today uh, in in the same day. I don't know. I, I struggle with that. But uh, regardless, that was uh, a nice little... Get another look here as Newsel touches it there. It bounces around. He's trying to get it. He definitely touches it there and it's picked up. Was that Tack Landry? Yeah, yeah, it was. We'll call that the icing on the cake. That's all he was missing and his stat line from this one was a fumble recovery touchdown and it's 52 to three. Yeah, did he basically get the cycle in football today? Is that what we'll give him? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> World Series game four coming up tonight. 348 to play. At this point, I, you got to expect the Bears to start making some subs. I do think they need to think about next week and making sure that their guys are fresh and rested and most importantly, just nothing bad happens. Yep. It's often at the tail end of games like this where freak accidents occur or things get chippy or whatever. And uh, that is part of a coach's responsibility. Just about at the three hour mark of this one. And we had that lengthy delay in the first half when Alberta defensive lineman Terrell Herring went down, taken to hospital by ambulance. And here is Eric Newsel with the return from his own five yard line. Gets up to about the 20. And the Dinos running out of chances here to at least get into the end zone, get something positive out of this game. <laughs> Yeah, uh, at this point, as I said, what was it, third quarter? Uh, the Dinos are, are pretty much practicing now, and uh, they have been for a while. They got young guys in there, execute, get those reps, get the ex gain the experience, and uh, prepared to come back next week. Play is whistled dead, and timeout called by Alberta. It looks like they have a personnel issue on the defense. Well, it's certainly been a, a long day for everybody here, but especially for the Dino sideline. I'm sure they didn't expect to see a scoreboard like this. But U of A's earned it. I don't think you could have found anybody in the country that would have expected <laughs> a scoreboard like this. <laughs> but yeah, again, I think that's fair. full marks to the Golden Bears for their performance today as you said before they've earned everything that they've gotten today dinos helped them out with turnovers unforced errors but alberta was there to pounce on those and took advantage of them every time uh, if you look at the stat line without those turnovers u of a still wins this football game oh a fumble on the exchange there as joseph picks it up and 
he gets back to the 20 yard line, but that kind of sums up the Calgary's day too as they fumble the exchange between Josiah Joseph and his tailback. Yeah, and, uh, don't like to put it on the whole lack of experience, but that's a, a factor in things like that. The whole zone read is a real finesse touch sort of execution. And you know, when you're working with guys that you don't get a lot of reps with, um, that can be challenging. You see it a lot when uh, centers get hurt and they come in and quarterbacks fumbling snaps and that sort of thing, because they're just not used to working together. And as much as it's an automatic type of thing, there is a lot of finesse to that exchange. So assuming that these two teams are back on this field next week, and assuming the Dinos have a relatively healthy lineup coming back, what do you expect to see from both sides? How do both sides approach this game coming up in a week? Well, you know, I think that's a, a really great question and a really tough one to answer because uh, the very fact that the Dinos are going to have a completely different lineup totally changes things, right? Both for them and for U of A and how they prepare. Um, I would think that U of A would come with a generally similar game plan, but it can't be carbon copy because the Dinos are going to have the film. They're going to have the time to prepare. They're going to watch it. They're going to be ready. Here's Joseph on second down, hit as he throws, and that'll fall incomplete. But that said, I, I can't see U of A steering too far from what they did today because they did it really well. Everything they did was, was really well done. They didn't make a lot of mistakes. They pounded the football. They got down the field on special teams. They did a lot of good things. So I would expect to see much of the same from them. I think the real question will be, can they bring the same intensity, the same enthusiasm that they showed today? Because that's, that's hard to replicate. Certainly the Dinos would be looking for that intensity to be amped up a little bit on their side too. And um, again, not to harp on the youth, but guys may be excited to be out there for getting this opportunity to play, but not necessarily bringing the intensity that they need as DeFonte launches another punt that pushes Zagdal back inside the 35, and he's got a little bit of a return here as he brings it up close to the 50. Cole Kussman in on the tackle for Calgary and two and a half minutes to play as the two teams play out the string. Well, and I think we've managed to come to a conclusion uh, to that question as we kind of work through it and talk about it together. And I think basically U of A is going to come back in a similar manner and the Dinos are going to have to make a lot of changes, improvements. And from that intensity perspective, really come out here because they got beat up today. Never mind the scoreboard, wherever they got physically beaten today. Looks like the other semifinal is headed to Vancouver as UBC is leading Regina 44 to eight here late in the third quarter as Andre Webster, number 21, takes that off the left side, and that's enough for a, another Alberta first down on the ground. Although the score is a little more inflated than I expected, I do expect I did anticipate UBC to win that game. Um, those guys, you know, Blake Nell does a good job with his athletes, and certainly as the season progresses, that team comes on stronger and stronger and stronger. You know, they take that approach of peaking towards the end of the season. First and 10, Alberta at the Calgary 46. Baker hands to Webster. Webster on the right side, spins off a tackle, finally brought down by Charlie Moore at the Calgary 42 after a gain of about five. Got to assume that the U of A have a pretty good running backs coach. These guys, uh, no matter who they got in or executing and seem to be doing the little things right and really letting things develop in front of them. Less than two minutes now. Baker throws complete for Nathan Rowe. And he's past the first down marker. That's enough to move the sticks. And another first down. Are the Bears just going to keep, why not? Just no, <laughs> keep exactly. even it down there. Oh, no, why not? I mean, a play like that, that's a sh relatively sure. ro low risk uh, pass attempt. Heck of a great catch, down low by his knee, reaches down, goes and gets it, watch it all the way in. First and 10, here's the give to Webster, flags down. Webster cuts back inside up across the 30. 
Give him three on first down. Flags in offside territory. Yeah, we'll wait to see what they say because there was multiple flags thrown. Offside Calgary is the indication. Offside, Calgary number 97. Five yard penalty, repeat first down. Normally in this situation, you'd be getting all over your athletes for going offside on defense in your red zone, but uh, at this point, I'm not sure it really matters. First and five after the offside penalty. Baker in the shotgun. Looking for more here as he looks for Tyler Henry and it's off the upright. Uh, Henry had a little bit of a step there on the defender, but unlucky off the upright, looking for his fifth touchdown of the game. Him and Baker are going to be upset about that because that was that had stats written all over it. Henry's definitely uh, definitely had a step, and it looked like the ball was tracking on the right trajectory, but Canadian football. Uprights are in play. Second and five with a minute 16 to go. Baker, incomplete intended for Henry in and out of his hands. Yeah, just threw the ball right through him. Third down. And looks like the field goal unit will come out for U of A. Uh, I think Baker and Henry can go and sit down and high-five each other a few times and feel pretty good about what they accomplished today. It's a 35-yard field goal attempt for Brent Arthur, and it's low. A little bit of a line drive may have been tipped by the Dinos. And Newsel is able to run it out of the end zone, so it'll stay an even 50 point differential with a minute one left on the clock. I'm not sure what happened there, if it was the hold or where he contacted the football, but uh, not sure it was tipped. I think that was just a line drive from the get go. Calgary's going to get the ball back at the 20 as we get another look at that kick by Arthur. Joseph with the handoff. Cole Cusman, let's check that. It's Jordan Fasano, number 27, gets the handoff. He'll yep. gain about four yards. I think that's pretty much what we can expect for the remainder of this football game. Run it out, everybody can go home, think about what happened today, forget about what happened today, whatever they choose to do with it. Clock running in the final 45 seconds of this one. Josiah Joseph in the shotgun, handoff to Fasano. Fasano gets up across the 30 yard line. First down for the Dinos. A nice little delayed draw play there on the inside. Sano does a good job of taking that upfield hard and picking up the first down. Of course, at this point, U of A is going to be playing relatively soft and just letting it all happen in front of them. Joseph turns, hands off to Fasano. He's up across the 35. With 15 seconds left, and we should be coming up on the final play. Yeah, this was uh, a marathon of a football game. Hats off to those that sat and watched the entire thing. Final play coming up of this football game, barring penalty. 
Josiah Joseph, handoff to <laughs> Jordan Fasano. He's brought down to the 40 yard line and that'll do it. The University of Alberta Golden Bears stun the nation with a 53 to three win over the number one ranked University of Calgary Dinos. It's a statement win from the Golden Bears as they look to punch their tickets into the Canada West playoffs for the first time since 2010. And if they get there, their next playoff game will take place at the same place their last playoff game did, and that's right here at McMahon Stadium next week. Of course, pending the outcome of the Manitoba-Saskatchewan game tonight, but the Huskies sure have their work cut out for them if they want to get into the postseason and extend their playoff streak. Yes, absolutely, and as I said, it's, it's hard to imagine uh, them coming out and doing what you of did today <laughs> and uh, running up a score to, to offset this. Uh, and I, I'm kind of looking forward to a Battle of Alberta next week, especially one that's been legitimized by a game like this. It'll be exciting to watch. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So full marks to the Golden Bears, and they'll wait and see very keenly having an eye on that Saskatchewan-Manitoba game tonight in Saskatoon. Calgary will finish the season at 7-1. and one. Just the third regular season loss in the career of Wayne Harris. And they'll head back to the playoffs next week where everybody's record is 0-0. Zero and zero. As the road to the Vanier Cup begins. 53-3 the final score. Alberta defeating number one Calgary. For Drew Carpenter, for Ned Bosnack, for our entire Maverick Media crew here at McMahon Stadium, thanks for joining us today on CanadaWest.tv. I'm Ben Matchett. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.